Hello, welcome everybody to another episode of Hobby and Chat. I'm going to talk for about an hour or two and uh, invite you to get out your models and start painting and hobbying. I am the Twin Coot, and with me today is Age of Nagash. Hi everyone, great to be on the channel again. Uh, like Twin Coot said, hopefully you'll be able to get some of your hobby work done while we talk about the new releases and updates um, that I think we got bombarded with with the Warhammer Fest. Oh, did we? Yeah, so I think, um, well, let's let's talk about uh, what we've been doing in the hobby, first of all. Uh, I am still getting ready for this GT this weekend, or for this next weekend. Um, I should be able to post this uh, by Wednesday. But it's on May 26th. Um, big GT. Uh, I got my Necrons ready. I got one model left to paint. The Of course, it's the Tesseract Vault, so it's the most the giant, giant model. That'll take, uh, it, it should take a month for me normally, but... I'm going to condense it down to a week, I guess. But everything else is done. Got the display board just about done. Pretty happy with everything, how, how everything's going to go. Got a couple practice games in. So I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I feel prepared, feel ready. Well, that's good. I mean, to be honest, if you need a month to paint something, I find it, if you only got a week, sleep is really, really, really overrated. That's so true. just give up on that. Exactly. And you'll be fine. That's what I've done with many models before. Um, like when I painted my Archaeon, I stayed. I took the day off work, and I stayed up for twenty-seven hours without getting any sleep painting <laughs> that. Um, I'm not going to swear, but that son of a female dog. So that took a very long time. But you know, once it's done, it's done, and you can enjoy it for the rest of the time. So exactly, yeah. what I've been up to in the hobby, I'll be honest, I've been very, very busy at work, so hobby time's been really, really limited at the moment. But I have, um, I did choose a army I was going to do. I've done a couple of videos on this on my channel, and the army I came down to was Seraphon. It was closely followed with Internet Deepkin, but the only problem with Internet Deepkin for me is um, everyone else in my local store has started playing them, which... Uh, some people might not see it as a problem, but if like five new people have just started that army in my store, I don't want to that much just jump on the bandwagon and play exactly the same army as them. So I thought it'd be different. And I went for Seraphon. I got the Star Collecting Box. Um, I've been very, very slowly painting up a Carnosaur when I have any spare time. And then they dropped news off a uh, Nighthorn army coming out. So I might have to abandon the Seraphon for a little while to do this Nighthorn army, so my hobby projects at the moment are sort of all over the place, but that's always standard for me, so yeah, pretty normal. Cool. Um, well, I guess let's get into the news then, because that's basically the whole show, and there's plenty of it. Yeah, that's what everyone wants to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, starting with the, the Warhammer Fest, all the announcements from that. Um, I think, first of all... I think you were the one that mentioned that we we're making a starter set with Nighthaunt and Stormcast. Uh, congratulations, you're right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was quite, um, I was happy to be right with that, not being arrogant or anything. But um, so I was told ages ago, basically in my local store, that the scenery for the um, introduction tables were painted up in a death themed, and then from that I gathered that there was going to be a new Star Collecting Box, uh, new Age Sigma starter box with Nighthorn and Stormcast in it, and it came true, so that's fantastic. Yes. Um, oh, they're also making a, a Warhammer Age of Sigmar podcast. I think that'll be cool. They'll be, be able to replace uh, channels like Age of Nagash and I. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll wipe it out. They'll see that obviously we had a huge um, market potential and then they've just taken it from us. Oh, yeah, exactly. But, um, joking aside, um, any more like content from anywhere, particularly Games Workshop, that they're going to be making is um, obviously really good. And similar to that, is that the is that the Hammerhill Herald you're talking about, or is that going to be a separate like newspaper article they're doing as well? It's just called Stormcast, and it's the official Warhammer Age of Sigmar podcast. But uh, the Hammerhall Herald, I think it's just uh, articles on the community page. I think they they've been doing um, Regimental Primer or something like that with with uh, 40k. I think it's about the same idea. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's it's to be similar to that I they did release a couple of um, like newspaper articles for that, didn't they? I think over the last year, and um, yeah, I think they're quite funny. They're quite good. I'm quite surprised how much um, 
um, content they're making for, um, if you just look at Age of Sigma at the moment, they've announced in this Warhammer Fest because um, I don't want to say they're oversaturating their own market, but it's it's almost quite hard to keep track of everything. So, um, like I said, we're going to do our best in this video to try and cover everything. So, um, yeah, like you say, they're going to do the new podcast and then the uh, new um, newspaper of the Mortal Realms. And that's pretty much the smallest bits of news, isn't it? Oh, Coming yeah. out of this right. release. Let's jump right over to kind of the biggest part of it is uh, the night, the new Night Haunt faction, and even I, I don't like Stormcast models normally, but the Sacro, Sacros, the Sacrosanct Chamber that looks That's that looks awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, um, I'm quite disappointed in myself because I absolutely despise Stormcast. I have no problem saying this. I buy Stormcast on the droves and then just cut them up. And put them onto bases for all my death miniatures and every other model to be honest i've got those decapitated ones i've got one where crit flares like ripping open the chest cavity of a liberator i get really creative with that um and it all stemmed from the wild west days of age sigma before points were announced when my opponent would fight me with three star drakes and um eight draconian guard against my blood reaver army so i was scarred um, as a child and because of that I hate Stormcast but going back to my original point the reason I'm disappointed in myself is because like you Twinku I do really really like these guys um, from the uh, wizards riding the you know like the battle cats to um, like the new um, like, is it the crossbow unit or archer unit you've got and then the I just really like the theme of them and then that also the artwork they did which was, I think, the main artwork for this Warhammer Fest, where it was that sort of Amazonian, sort of almost shield maiden style uh, female liberator with her helmet off. It's, it's really attracted me to this army. So, yeah, I I might have to do the Stormcast army, like just add it to their list. And if they are going to be included in this big new starter box, um, I'm going to buy the box with the Nighthorn. And if I'm going to get the Stormcast with it as well, I'd happily build and paint them up. So, yeah, really, like I say, a little bit disappointed in myself, but really sort of excited at the same time. Yeah, I kind of had the same feeling. I do really like the, I've always liked the Chicken Riders, but uh, I really like this this version of them. And the Battle Cats, they're, oh man, they're so cool. Um, oh yeah, the bat and it's um, it's nice to see that there's a, quite a few variations of those Battle Cats, not exactly the same one. Right, so, um, yeah. It's, a, it's like, Nighthorn's having such a big release, we'll, we'll get to a little bit. And then the Stormcast, again, they're having a big release. So everyone can sigh, you know, be relieved. But joking aside, um, they are having quite a lot of models coming out for them. It's not a couple of units. It's, um, yeah, it's almost maybe an army in themselves. I think it's uh, probably more than the Fire Slayers have at this point. They're getting, so they're getting the Bolt Thrower, um, the unit of crossbow people. There's another unit of more elite um, models. I don't, I don't know what they were. Uh, at least two characters, uh, and then there's also uh, I saw other pictures of other other uh, Stormcast characters that were just different variations of them, and also um, another Shadespire team, which I knew they they needed a third one at least, but they are getting another Shadespire team, and actually it looked pretty cool. I thought. Um, yeah, I mean. Two's not really enough, is it? So they needed a third one. Yeah. And yeah, like the models for this are really nice. You do have the um, I know you're saying I don't know the name of them, but the sort of more elite sort of I think they're almost like wizard sort of infantry cross with um, they remind me of like protectors or retributors or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the new crossbow unit that are literally firing warheads. Which I don't know what's going to be inside them. Maybe cursed souls or something they fire at the enemy. You've got the new uh, ballista, like you were talking about, which is basically like a huge bolt gun, which I imagine is just going to spit lightning. And then the Lord, I'm going to get his name wrong, but the Lord Arcanum. Yep. Arcanum. On his uh, the Griff Charger or whatever it's called. Um, yeah. That's for me, that is a really nice model. That's probably my favourite one out of this because I just really like the pose in it. Yeah, actually, I got the, all the names here. The main troops, the rank and file guys, with the uh, they have little maces. Um, they're actually pretty cool weapons. Those are the sequitors. The the more elite 
models that I was talking about the are their warrior mages, the evocators. They have a sword and a staff. Um, I feel like they're kind of uh, kind of awkward looking. I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at them now, and it might just be me, but I feel like um, this one with like pointing his sword in the air, and I feel like that sword it's just too big. It's just too wide. Yeah. Um, like they. <laughs> They remind me a little bit of like you know children toys if you see what I mean you know they're a bit yeah. big and chunky and their faces uh, and I, too like they're I don't like those masks I think they're slightly different than the Stormcast mask and and maybe they're just one of those models you guys see in person I mean these are just one little picture we're looking at exactly when I first saw the um, Internet Deep King like their eels and all and the sharks and stuff I really wasn't a fan and now yeah. that I see them in person I really like them so it might just be one of those things. But um, something I do like with these new Stormcast is the robes because it gives you so much more to paint. Yeah, right. And just um, make the uh, colours and them pop a little bit more rather than just like basically gold and then whatever colour you did there, um, shoulder pads. So, uh, yeah, it's really nice. And then you're saying you're going through the units? Yeah, and then the castigators are these crossbowmen that we're talking about. They shoot these. Um, they're kind of like a little... I don't even know how to describe them. They're little, uh, like, Molotov cocktails almost. They're little yeah, capsules they remind me of like, something. Something's um, in there, I bet. German World War II stick and aid sort of things. I don't know yeah, the yeah, names yeah. of them. But, um, um, so. And then the Celestar Ballista. That's, that's the uh, big crossbow. And I saw um, another picture with two um, crewmen that looked very different. They were in different poses. So I wonder... If they're getting uh, two different models of crossbow, maybe uh, one's going in the starter set, one's not, or something like that. Yeah, that could be something they're doing. Um, I imagine, for example, we said going back to the um, the How did how they pronounce the uh, like the hybrid between the you know the uh, warrior mages? We we're just talking about. It looked a little bit funny. What's the, the name again? I can't pronounce it. The evocators. Yep, that's the one. Um, like I was saying, their pose is a little bit funny. Maybe that's because they are an easy build um, kit that will be in the new box set. Yeah, it right. could just be one of those things. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, also, we just talked about the Lord Arcanum. That's the guy in the uh, chicken. I don't know what those those animals are called, but they're really cool looking. Everybody calls them chocobo riders, I think. Yeah, that is the closest similarity I can put to them, but they are really nice i do like the original one they did for the lord aquila but this one with him like you know um front legs i suppose you would call them in the air you know mm -hmm. like all posed up is quite it's nice it's will be a nice parallel to the um uh naya shrouds on his mount so i imagine that might be in the big box set as well i'm not too sure right yeah, and the uh lord ordinator the the guy that came with the malign portent series uh He's obviously in the sacrosanct chamber, this this chamber that we're talking about. He that's, that's the whole reason they got the cell star ballista, I'm sure, to, to make sure they had a war machine. Yeah, I mean, we we all had a little winkling, didn't we, when that Lord Ornair came out saying, but you know, the Stormcast don't have artillery, so it's a bit pointless in Stormcast army. Right. Yeah, you just wait, you just wait, <laughs> and I bet that blister won't be the only bloody artillery piece they get. They'll have their own iron wheeled arsenal. They don't need to ally in because it's already Stormcast. And, um, yeah, there'll probably be a whole bunch of stuff. And, again, what I was thinking is the Lord Ordinator, um, obviously he's really good with war machines and he'll probably make this war machine, you know, be able to shoot twice and lots of other things. But that is a command ability to make it be able to shoot twice. And in a Stormcast army, there's probably a better general you want to use their command ability. Um, but how command points which we'll get to later will work is that um, you could have a general and you could also have the Lord Ordinator and he could also make this thing shoot twice without um, needing to be the general yep yep so uh, Stormcast I don't think have got weaker in the new edition oh no and um, with this new uh, I'm jumping to the faction focus for Sacrosanct obviously mm -hmm. but uh, they put out a war scroll, the Knight Incantor. This is that, that female wizard with her arms up. She's kind of cool, too. And I, I assume that's another one on, on the Battle Cat. Maybe it's the same type of model. But she has, uh, once per game, um, automatically unbind a spell. 
item. That's pretty cool. And then uh, another once per game, we get off mortal wounds. But uh, her her signature spell, her unique spell, is kind of like arcane bolt, except it hits everything within 18 inches, hits them with one mortal wound, and then subtracts one from their run and charge, I believe, as well. Yeah. So that's that's actually pretty cool. That's kind of a big explosion to slow everybody down around you. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously the first wizard they're going to announce for the Stormcast isn't going to be a bad wizard. Um, the other things is, I'd like to see his points. I hope it's more than my Necromancer because she also gets free attacks. we hit on a free, wind on a free, mass from a rent, and free damage, which um, it's a, it is a good stat line. Yeah. Um, she's got a free plus save as well. And like I say, she's got that once per battle um, ability to be able to deal mortal wounds to the enemy as well, doesn't she? Right, yeah. Which is, um, yeah, it's it's all exciting. It's um, it's nice that ability to be able to do the uh, mortal wounds to the enemy within 18 inches, like I said, that sort of arcane bolt spell, and then subtract one from their run and charge rolls. Um, to me, the mortal wounds you do to them is nice, but the subtracting one from the run and charge rolls, uh, if I've, me and you have both mentioned before if you can affect the enemy's movement it's huge so that's a, a really nice addition there I think mm -hmm. um, they've also announced a sequitor prime which um, is a helmetless model she I, or they said it's a sh someone says it's a she I thought it looked like a male I, I couldn't tell really but it looks like an awesome model they had like a, a scaled up version at the Warhammer Fest, uh, but then I've seen a, a regular size model. It's like sucking up souls. It's it's really cool looking. And, and Are we again, talking about the Ghostbuster model? Yeah, yeah. And again, I, I don't like saying this about Stormcast, but it is really cool looking. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It pains me to say it too. Um, yeah, I know the one. Um, it'll be... When I look at something like that, yeah, the model's awesome. Um, it's quite different as well, you know, that idea, how they're sucking up souls, souls and all that sort of thing. I just wonder how that's going to be implemented in the game, like rules-wise. I'm quite excited to see what that war scroll's going to be and mm -hmm. uh, how it plays a part. You know, does it um, uh, suck up the souls and, like, project them um, as a weapon at the enemy, or does it suck up the souls and then be able to bring that storm cast? Um, I don't know. So it'd be quite um, interesting to see for that one. Yeah, I, I bet it's the latter. I bet it heals back models. I I was actually thinking it was a Stormcast on the ground, but it, it looks like a, a corn or at least chaos model on the ground, the corpse getting his soul sucked out of him. Yeah, it looks like a smaller scale model as well, doesn't it? Not like quite a Stormcast sort of size. Yeah, because I know the that one priest, I don't remember his name, but the, the guy with the skull mask, he can... He, he goes around in the fluff. He goes around and sucks up the Stormcast souls. So, like, that idea of sucking up souls doesn't seem that outlandish for Stormcast, but I didn't realize he was sucking up a enemy's soul, you know? Yeah, that's the Lord of Relicta. So what right. he does is he basically ensures that the Stormcast get to, is it like Sigma on, is it? So they can be reforged and all that. That's basically his job. Um, have you listened to the audiobooks for Age of Sigma, like the audio dramas? I have not. Okay, I won't ruin what happens, but basically, um, the Lord Relector wants to. Uh, he's in the realm of um, death with um, a bunch of Hallowed Knights, and then they come in contact with Nagash. Um, some Stormcasts happen to die in that contact, and um, the Lord Relector tries to bring their souls up to Sigmaron so they can be reforged, and Nagash was having none of it. So. That's basically his job to uh, pass on the process of you know, souls being reforged. So yeah, a similar job to uh, what this lady's going to do, probably. And then that's pretty much it for the storm cars, isn't it? That yeah, I think. I think so. Um, but before we move on to the um, night hunt, I would like to mention that giant chaos dragon. <laughs> yeah. Um... That's like uh, I said to you before the show started. I do like my kidneys too much, but if I ever could get rid of one, I would have to because this dragon is absolutely amazing. It's going to cost a bomb. I don't know how it would fit on a table, but oh my god, that's the nicest dragon I have seen. Um, I can put my hand on my heart and say that it is really nice. It looks like there's almost like a slaughter priest on its back. I think it's you know a chaos lord or a corn lord, but. Um, it's huge, and when you see the uh, little 
man run in front of it from the uh, giant kit it is you oh, i really want it but it's going to be a be about 500 pounds so about what's that 700 dollars something like that yeah i think it'll be about that uh he is just so cool and the wingspan is gigantic it looks like it's better or bigger than smog from a uh, hobbit i never i don't oh. think it's, i think i saw that in person yeah that thing is huge as well um but this looks bigger because he's like standing up on his back two feet well i saw this uh age sigma open day at warhammer world um, a couple of years ago so it might have been downsized a little bit from the original sculpt but its wings were bigger than a dreadsaurian hmm. okay so yeah it'll be it'll be interesting i don't know how this will fit within your you know your 12 inches for your deployment <laughs> range that might be you might have to speak to your opponent before it and the other thing i wonder is that how good is this going to be in the game because yeah. it can't it can't be too good and i tell you for why because if this um, is a model that's like a thousand points and it's really powerful, surely this model would have, um, you know, beaten the crap out of Archaeon and would have became the ever chosen. Yeah, that's like, a good point. Like fluff wise, I might just be thinking a bit about it a bit too silly and a bit too much. But if this guy is better than Archaeon, surely he would be the uh, Lord of, you know. Well. Okay. Archeon can still roll those two sixes and uh, just wipe him off the field, so if he feels like it. That's true, but if he doesn't roll those two sixes, he's got <laughs> minus one rent. I imagine these, uh, this lovely dragon's got a bit more than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of hope he's like the price of a whole army or so. <laughs> I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah, I, I do hope he's the price where you can put him in an army and you've got enough points left over for three units of ten marauders. Yeah, right. You know, so this guy is... I, I don't know how much marauders are. How much are they? 60 points for 10 or something? I think it is, yeah. Yeah, so say this guy is... Uh, what's that, like 1,820 points or something? Yeah, he should be about that. <laughs> Could work out well. I, I would love to buy one. If it was about... It's not going to be, but if it was about £300, I might be able to save up at some point again. But it's not going to be that cheap. Yeah. Um... But yeah, and I believe that's the biggest model for Age of Sigma by far, or Fantasy. For sure, it? yeah. It's the first one that almost uh, compares to 40k Forge World. Yeah, I wonder how it compares to the which, which uh, Imperium Knight it is, or which Imperium uh, Titan it is. I wonder which which level it is on the on the scale, you know. Yeah, I wonder. That might be the next picture they show it with, you know, to at scale to it I'm not too sure mm -hmm, yeah. and then um, it is off topic it's not Age of Sigma but because we're scrolling down the same page um, the next thing coming from Forge World is that huge Necron uh, construct which is absolutely awesome yep I will be buying that as soon as it, I have the opportunity <laughs> yeah that thing yeah, looks that... so cool I got the two Tesseract vaults now and then that thing I'm going to make it um, uh, just one army just three giant models <laughs> just for the fun of it yeah, but you, um, like I said, I haven't played much 40k, but you can do that, or there's like a, yeah. is there a detachment or something? So, yeah, yeah, there's a possible. detachment. I'm, a, I'm assuming that's a Lord of War, which is kind of like a super heavy kind of model. Um, there's a detachment that you can take three of them in, and uh, I am pretty pumped about that. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's so cool. Yeah, it obviously reminds the, uh, or reminds me of the, uh, is it this? What's it? The something stalker, isn't it? The spider sort of. Yeah, one the triarch stalker. It does look a lot like that. On steroids. Yeah, for sure. Those giant, those, they're not crab claws, but like the giant claws in the front. Those things look. I, I wonder what they do in combat. They, they do, I hope they are pretty, pretty brutal. Yeah, and it's it's really nicely designed as well. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't have a forty k army. I don't play forty k. So I'm mainly just looking at age sigma models, but for me, this is one of the nicely, uh, or one of the most nicest designed models I've seen for a long time. It fits so well with the Necron theme. And um, like I said, I, I love the fact that it's got a head as well, so it looks like it's, um, you know, Ascension, and it's... Yeah. Um, it'll be really nice. Um, if you do get one, um, I'd love to see it painted up and stuff. It'd be awesome. Oh, for sure. There's two big guns... I trying to see if there's i can't tell if there's guns on the bottom of it if there's four two guns on each side or if it's uh, just one I, I can't those are like targeting things maybe 
Yeah. Are you talking about like so you've got like obviously the big barrel and then you've got a smaller one underneath? Yeah, with like a little round nub on the end of it. I, I guess that's probably part of the main gun or something like that. Might be. I mean, I haven't got an economy, but I'd be I'd be tempted to get this because. Yeah. Um, it's so cool. Yeah, it's supposed to be comparable to the Imperial Knight for uh, 40k. Um, I think it's the same size, but I'm kind of glad. I wasn't really expecting a giant crab monster as uh, our cons as our. If if Necron got a giant construct, I wasn't expecting a giant crab, but I I, I really do like it. No, I thought you know maybe it might be more of a. Um, almost a sort of a flyer thing because there's already flyers obviously in Forge World isn't there for mm, Nick yeah. ones. Uh but this is by far much cooler in my own opinion yeah so now we got the Goss Pylon which is like a giant just stationary cannon we got the Tesseract Vault uh, the Obelisk and this thing now we got a whole bunch of giant things yep and hopefully this thing won't be um, crazy expensive in the points so you'll see him a fair bit in games maybe yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it'll probably be around 500 points. I think that's about how much the Imperial Knights are. Yeah, exactly. He's not, he's not going to be stupidly pointed, so you know he should see quite a bit of action, which is nice. Mm -hmm, yeah. A um, whole bunch of uh, 30k stuff. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not too interested in 30k. Some, yeah, some neither, cool neither am I not. Not in a bad way. I've listened to a few of the Horus Heresy um, audiobooks, which uh, they are really cool, but mm -hmm. um, I don't know too much about it, so I don't really want to talk about this stuff in case I get it wrong and butcher all the names. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the models do look nice. I mean, um, what's that? Um, I'm just looking at one where there's a guy with a sort of um, Greek-style helmet. We don't need... I think it's talking about like an Alpha Legion Predator or something. Oh, okay. So, yeah. There's a there's a few nice things. Um, if you find my knowledge on this, uh, you know, insulting, I do apologize because <laughs> I do not know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I just know uh, a little about the fluff. I don't know anything about the game itself. Yeah, um, and then there's also that um, a mini Titan game, isn't there, coming out? Yeah, that looks kind of cool. I, th I think the models are cool. I don't know if I'll play it. And the buildings, that the terrain itself, that looks awesome. Yeah, that is really nice. Just to see everything. Um, small scale isn't it it's mm -hmm. for a miniatures game it's it's weird but it's good it's nice yeah I'm, I'm waiting for them to scale down the actual models like they did with uh, Epic and War Master I think that would be more fun I, I don't really care about the Titans to be honest I mean they're cool looking but I'm not an, an Imperium guy to be honest no neither more like I said I don't play um, 40k I did have a small Necron collection once upon a time, but I just thought the Imperium, you know, some models are nice, but it, it just felt a bit too standard for me. Mm -hmm. Like it was the it was the easy go to option, which is why I didn't want to do it. Um, and then if we keep on scrolling down this page, this blog, um, we come across a new Blood Bowl team. And I don't play Blood Bowl, but I do like these new um, Dark Elf models. Yeah, I hope that's the uh, aesthetic for the whatever Dark Elves come out for Sigmar, because these are awesome. They're so cool. Yeah, they're really nicely done. And um, similar to, like you say, you hope that's going to be the aesthetic. It's the same with the um, the Skaven Blight Scramblers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really nice aesthetic as well, so hopefully the Skaven model is going to be um, similar to that when they eventually come out. Yeah. Yeah, I hope the Skaven are kind of like as dynamically posed as the Blood Bowl and the and also the Shadespire team as well. Yeah, oh yeah, that Shadespire team just really showed how cool like even just clan rats can be. Which yeah. was um which is nice and then I think what we've got like a new troll coming out, have we, for the um whatever the destruction um Blood Bowl team is. Yeah, he yeah. looks he looks really cool. I think he throws yeah. the uh, the he throws the goblin that's holding the ball. I think that's how they do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I was to uh, have trolls in the destruction team, uh, well, the destruction army and stuff, I'd definitely get this guy and then put some wings onto the goblin, and then that'd be my doom dive catapult. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, so much conversion potential with any of the blood ball stuff. Oh yeah, it's it's really nice. I've seen um, people do the skating bright scramble team as go runners and stuff like that, which is mm -hmm. really nice as well. And it's not too hard the conversion either. 
I'm not saying it doesn't take yeah. effort. I mean, like it's um, it's not too hard to achieve in a good way. Yeah, and and boy, do the old gutter runners need uh, something as to stand in. <laughs> yeah, then they're still metal, aren't they? No, they're they they're actually a pretty good plastic kit. It's just they look Are really they? they're really thick and they look pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, is that from, is it about 2000 they came out, something like that? Yeah, it was probably around there. And it's actually a pretty good kick. There's so many options. There's different arms. It's either the Night Runners or Gutter Runners, either way. But, uh, but yeah, they, they have little, little capes and stuff, too. There's a lot of bits that you would use on other things. I found that with a lot of the um, scaven kits, because I obviously don't have a scaven arm myself, but there's quite a few people in the store who do. And it's like the amount of bits box they have from all the odd bits from like Vermin Lords and all that and Doom Wills and it's almost because most things in the Skaven um, army are well I say most things mainly the more machines and the monsters are multi-build kits aren't they so it's like you know uh, if you take the uh, Warp Lightning Cannon for example you can make the um, Catapult instead so you get lots of leftover bits and yeah. I'm a big fan of conversion so it's quite nice yeah yeah I, I have a Skaven army I haven't played in ages but I have so many extra extra bits and just I use them all the time because they just they fit in everything. Yeah, even if you've got like the odd little bit and you wonder what you can use it for, like um, there's one of the Vermilors that's got like a green orb in his hand, isn't he? Mm-hmm. There's um, so what my friend did for my store is he just took the orb and he used it as an object to mark. He put it on a base and like did some scenery stuff on the base. And it yeah. turned out to be really nice. And then if we go a bit down further on the blog, we've got the Necromunda stuff. And again, I don't play Necromunda, but I do quite like these little uh, little beasties, these little pets like the alligator and yeah. the wolf rat type things. Yeah, the monsters are cool. The the one thing I do want to note on the Necromunda stuff because I don't I don't play it either, and but the models are pretty cool. That um yeah. the one with the shields, like the energy shields, like they're that clear plastic. That's really cool. I hope they start doing that more. Uh, Forge World or Games Workshop. Do you see which one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I'm on it now. Um, I haven't looked at them before, but yeah, I see. Um, this could be a a trial thing that's in, see if people like it, because, mm-hmm. yeah, that's um, really nice, and you can see, like, the technology there and how it all works. So. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I I, um, I don't think, a, I think a lot of people didn't like the Necron green rods, but I think they're pretty cool. Um, I, I go on eBay and buy the different color rods, because... I don't like the green, but um, I think they look cool, oh, and uh, this clear plastic stuff is pretty neat. What were you saying? Um, yeah, I just agree with the Necron stuff. Like I said, I only had like a little small collection of them, but that's one of the things that appealed to me. Like the, um, uh, I, I quite like the green, but I did see you could get like blue rods and stuff as well, just like the nice, like really bright, um, like clear plastic colors. Mm-hmm. It was nice. It made them a bit different as well. So um, if they did this with, um, it's almost just like Perspex, isn't it, with the shields? Um would be a really nice thing easy to paint you just keep them um, on the sprue um, just paint the middle bit and then obviously paint the whole miniature separate and then just glue them on at the end yeah and uh, yes it's nice and moving on to the little pets these are like wolf rat type creatures um, I'm just looking at them and I'm wondering if I can make um, flesh hounds out of them for corn yeah I'm sure uh, put some uh, rods into their neck and then green stuff the uh, like the frills and uh, could work. Oh, I do like that alligator. He's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I want that for a self and army. <laughs> yeah, that would be I want to have skin trying him. <laughs> I don't oh, know. Man. Yeah, they would be my source knights. The salamander. They could be cool salamanders or razor. Well, I think it would be better salamanders than razor. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. You hit it on the nail there. Salamanders. Oh, uh, that's cool. If the, if these things are not a lot of money, I will get them. Like, if you can buy them separately. Uh, well, I think the salamanders themselves are fairly expensive anyway, so. What, are they probably like £15 for one or something? Uh, something I bet like it's that. about £20 for you guys. Gosh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, the Necromander stuff, like I say, I don't really know anything about it, but Mask Models, looks like they've got quite a few things. And overall, with the. Um, I know I think it's mainly the Age Sigma focus, it's Warhammer Fest stuff, and I'm sure it is, but. Um, I think everything got a bit of something. Yeah. Even even Lord of the Rings stuff got some stuff. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cool um, Hobbit stuff. A- another game that I don't play, but I, I always pay attention to the models because I like. Um, I, like I Lord love the, of the films. Rings. Yeah, I 
I love the films. Um, there's a bit of resurgence of it in my store, so I might have to jump on that at some point. But at the moment, like I say, don't have loads of time for the hobby at the moment, so I'm going to try and focus what I want to crack on with. And my favourite thing out of everything is Age of Sigma. So. Yeah. Yeah, same here, except I'm uh, favouring 40k right now. But hopefully uh, this uh, in, uh, injection of new stuff in Age of Sigmar will bring people and me back. And actually... Um, Pretty excited over the last week or two, uh, a handful of people just randomly picked up Age of Sigmar. And it's like, all right, guys, I've been trying to get you guys to play for like two years, and, <laughs> and now you're going to pick it up? This is awesome. Because <laughs> yeah, you say there's not, or there wasn't that many people in your local area that played it? Yeah, there is. I could only find like my immediate friends, and I would have to like kind of talk them into a game because they were more into 40k at the moment. And the store itself, I couldn't really find any games for Age of Sigmar, but it seems like that's picking up, and I bet the all this new stuff is going to get even more people into it. You know what it was, don't you, that got them into it like recently? It's that new Stormcast Chamber, I'm telling you, that's the only reason. Oh, yeah, it was that third one, right, right. Yes, third time lucky, mate, third time lucky. Because uh, everybody was sitting there thinking, like, why would I play Age of Sigmar? There's only two, uh, there's only two chambers open. Why? What's the point? Yeah, and it's like oh, they they don't even have an artillery piece or wizards, right? Or a, or a third monstrous mount option, or like a fifth battle line option. <laughs> yeah, or a sort of jokey sort of video about it. You know, it's, it was all <laughs> yeah, that was kind of good. <laughs> yeah, or a Ghostbuster sort of reference model. Um, but yeah, joking aside, it, that's really I'm really glad to hear that um, from your local area. Obviously, we live quite far away from each other and where i am um i'm quite lucky my store sort of split 50 50 with 40k and age of sigma mm, wow. um but i think that's mainly down to people in my store there's some quite competitive people but most people are um just play for fun so it's like open play games and stuff like that so people like i like those models and i don't need to have them like for example if someone wants to play open play they can have whatever models they want for age of sigma right yeah and that's the sort of feeling we have in my store sort of just play for fun don't get me wrong i'm sort of person who would turn up with the gash and a 1000 point army <laughs> so, um, that's why i have to go to tournaments to play those games <laughs> yeah it's easier to just uh i mean 40k has a uh, narrative play as well but it's easier to just throw models down in age of sigmar and have a somewhat balanced game without too much thought into it yeah and it's well we'll wait until what the new edition brings but uh, at the moment yeah it's very much easier and um i do like 40k as well i would like to do 40k and there's even like i'd like to give blood boil a trial and you know even necromunda because like i was saying some of the models are quite nice but it's it's really easy obviously in this hobby to split yourself into too many games so i think if you do 40k and age sigma i think that's good if you end up doing like three or four um if you can and you want to that's fantastic but um, it can be a struggle, I find. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard enough keeping up with 40k and Age of Sigmar. They're both moving at breakneck speeds with new releases. Yeah, and with the even keeping up with Age of Sigmar now with this new edition, it's going to take some time, like studying this new big rule book that's coming out. Right. And and, uh, and the new Gemma's Handbook. Yeah. And um, so like last year, like towards the, the latter half of the year, it was all 40k. And then this year, I was expecting it to be like all Age of Sigmar, but they like still peppering in 40k books like here and there. Like, oh, here's Drakkar, and here's uh, Harlequins are coming up next too. And uh, they just keep adding stuff there too. And I'm just trying to keep up with Age of Sigmar. <laughs> so much stuff. Yeah. But it, I know it's, you it's mean. A it's like, I don't like, I say I don't play 40k, but why haven't the Orcs had their codex out yet? Or haven't <laughs> had their codex out yet? Yeah, they they have to wait usually. Usually they're the last ones to get anything. So I'd be very disappointed if I was an orc player because yeah. I probably thought like maybe my book's coming out next and then the why are the harlequins getting a codex that's a tiny <laughs> army isn't it yeah it is it's kind of like a sub faction but I think I think orcs are uh, actually going to get a big release is why they're waiting oh, okay fair one otherwise they're, cause they're quite a big army and they have a lot of unit choices don't they a lot of, they do, a lot but, of models right yeah they do have a lot of unit choices. And actually, um, they won some big tournament. I don't remember which one, but they won some big tournament uh, with their index, which 
I don't know if I mean I don't know if you know the reference, but it's that's pretty that's pretty difficult. Which most armies have codexes now with with all their stratagems and all their special rules, but the orcs won with just their base points and base base units. Yeah, that's really good. It's almost like um, if I compare it to Age Sigma, an army winning a big tournament and they don't even have a battle time. Right. Exactly. And they just got their rules from you know like one of those big Grand Alliance books. Yep. Yeah, so fair play to that old player. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that's... I remember... Because um, when I said I started getting a few Necrons and stuff, it was before the Necron Codex came out. It was sort of the start of 8th edition. And um, I was like, I'm not going to buy that index because I know the Necron Codex will come out at some point. And then that index literally gets made redundant at that point. Yeah. So, but... Um, no, no, are the Necrons quite good, are they, in the new edition? Yeah, I'm I'm having a lot of fun with them. There's a lot of different builds you can you can take with them. Um, I'm not sure how well they do it in the tournaments just yet, since their book is still relatively new. But um, you'll yeah. find out. Yeah, exactly right. Um, so yeah, we we talked about a 40k Necromunda. Um, the next thing on the blog is just talking about that uh, adapters Titanicus thing, which is like the mini Titans. Uh, then we move on to the night haunt, don't we? I believe. Yeah, and before before we mention night haunt, um, I kind of wanted to skip over to the malign sorcery. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, which I assume is the continuation of malign portents. Uh, they have these, what do they call them? Per- permanent spells or something like that. Um, but they're they're models. You, you have to buy the spell. It's really cool. But I, actually, they look. Some of them look really cool looking. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, I I looked at these and so, not gonna lie, when I first saw the um, spiky ball for the um, you know the purple um, sun, is it for the death? Yeah, coffee. And I thought, and I thought not gonna lie, I thought, what is this thing? But now that I see they're bringing loads of them out, I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm on board with this. They look awesome. Like the jewels for the um, destruction one. I was just about to say that's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, not gonna lie, that's and they um, talked a little bit about the rules and we won't probably won't go too deep in it because they be very vague but basically if this thing moves over stuff it does damage to them yeah um, so yeah that's really cool um, I like the fireball I like I like the lining I like all of them to be honest yeah me uh, and it's going to be cool that you know when you do a spell it's not just words and it's not just oh that did damage to that it's this is a model it's going on the table and the dual one is going to run through your units and eat them yeah I think that is really cool and if it's I don't know if it will work like that but um, if it is treated as a model and you can't move within three inches of these spells, it's also ball control, isn't it? It's another thing. Yeah, for sure. It's. I thought we've never seen anything like this before, but you've got the Bellwind Vortex, haven't you? So there is there are similarities, but uh, yeah, this is really cool, and the models are really really nice. Right. And I imagine this is going to be a requirement in match play as well if you want to cast those spells. Well, I was actually just thinking it was not going to be a requirement because I was wondering if it's going to be like, um, uh, like with Warhammer Fantasy, there was a Storm of Magic, where it was like this little campaign book that nobody played. I mean, people in my store played for like a month, but. Um, I mean, I haven't done any Malign Portent stuff. I'm wondering if this stuff will be that same way. But, I mean, it looks really cool, and I kind of hope it was injected into the real game. Yeah, I mean... It, it could be, I think, if they make it optional, um, people might not do it. That's the fear. Mm-hmm. For me, it's like you said, the Malign Portent thing was fun, and like things like Firestorm, but people stopped doing it after a while. So if they make this um, required, um, I mean, what are these models going to be? Like, what, 10, 15 pounds? So what, about 20, 25 dollars, something like that? Yeah. Um, it's it's reasonable. I'll buy them. You know, if, if you happen to buy something for 15 pounds um, and you're starting a whole new army, you're not really thinking about it. So I'd buy it. And um, if it is required, it means you'll see them on the table a lot and it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. And I don't think, and I personally, I like all these models. I don't... I, I'm not going to have to buy a model that I don't like. So, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, and I'd imagine that uh, different units, or different armies can use the same one. I mean, I, I imagine orcs are not the only ones that are going to use that those jaws. It's probably any destruction, or I don't even know how the distinction yeah. would be. And I, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, like the Stormcast one with the fireball, I very doubt it's only Stormcast that can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe some, there's some reuse potential there. 
yeah so yeah you should manage to get quite a bit of usage out of it and um, they don't look too big to transport so it's not going to be a hint then again that purple moon is absolutely huge isn't it next to that <laughs> yeah that is really big I, I, I think I feel like it's kind of weird how different the sizes are because there's the I think the fire thing is really small. I know the lightning bowls are pretty small, but there's two of them. But the fire looks pretty small. And then the big purple coughing thing, that is huge. Yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very different. Maybe the big purple sun is going to be, uh, I don't know, it casts on a 10. And the other stuff casts on a 6. You know, it might just be like, it has a bigger effect. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. With a lot of this stuff, it's, it's just speculations. We are going to have to wait and see. Right. Yeah, and like you said, while they while they released the rules for the jaws, they didn't really. They just said what it, how it does damage. They didn't say like how you move it or anything like that. Although it kind of seemed like you would be able to move it around and stuff the way it was written. Yeah, I imagine it's going to be. I mean, I don't know anything, but I imagine it's going to be a d6 movement or two d6, like very random. Yeah, that would be good. I've, I think these spells are going to be hard to control. I don't think they're going to be as simple as um, they're going to work perfectly how you'd like them to every turn. There might even be like a scatter dice. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would actually kind of like that. That's how some of the spells... There are some spells, like I guess there are vortex spells in Warhammer Fantasy where you had this like... They sold these little... It was basically a template, but it looked kind of cool and it would move around the table and stuff. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Um, I'm a big fan of making your games random. Yeah. You know, that, that's the fun. When you when the unexpected happens, obviously when it's unexpected and it's bad, it's it's annoying, but it still makes the game exciting. Mm. That's why I would not want to play as each army because it just pans out exactly how you plan. Yeah. Uh, but moving on. So yeah, those spells are nice. And uh, we haven't seen a chaos model next to one of these. So. Oh, good point. I don't know if that means anything or cool. it but, might do maybe there's more spells to come right and also they only show five uh, there's well actually six but um, and they all seem to be linked to one of the lores of magic um, so I guess they're not showing everything right now yeah the only one where I'm not too sure the lore of magic is the one with the internet deep king I think that's death because it looks like it's souls yeah I guess yeah that's gotta be it because shadow must be that big purple coughing thing uh, the purple coughing thing is death um, I'm basing that purely on there's a skull in it so oh. well I thought I, I thought you were saying that I didn't know Deepkin thing was death there might be two that's I, I don't know I have no idea I'm to be honest I'm only saying that's death because there's a necromancer next to it right that's what I was thinking too but then the other one has it has more skulls on it <laughs> The other one does have more skulls in it, so it's the way of skulls. This is not. This shouldn't be the way of Warhammer because there's skulls on literally anything. Even the good guys have skulls in them. Um, right. The one next to Marathi is uh, the realm of light and shadow, isn't it? Because they revolve around each other. Right. Yeah. But is there dark? There's dark and shadow, isn't there? Is there? Oh, why I, just don't, I don't confusing. remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, the fireball is definitely fire. That's that's true. We can. We can agree on that, and then the jaw one is beasts. Yep. Oh, it's not beasts, is it? What is it? Wild? The beasts? Uh, I think it's beasts, isn't it? Yeah, it used to be beasts. Anyway. <laughs> no anyway, <one>. moving on. <laughs> Before I lose my mind. Um, uh, then we. Is it the Night Haunt stuff now? Night Haunt. Oh, man. Uh, and, and just let's preface this by saying both I and Age of Nagash are probably a bit biased to this section, but. <laughs> Uh, does, I don't know does what you're talking cool. about. Okay, that's that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I I think I said numerous of times how much I favour um, death because I've I've got to. It's like when they the news dropped last weekend, I didn't know what to talk about. And I was like, you know, my channel is a death channel, so it has to be Nighthorn. And boy, are we spoiled for choice to talk about this stuff. Mm, yeah. So uh, let's. Uh, I'm just gonna skip to that night haunt faction focus article um which a lot of these uh, so all the faction focus articles i've just been after the first one i just started skipping to the new stuff because it seems like they, they got a player perspective which is cool but they got the they never let the player play the new rules so they're basing everything off the old stuff so they're like 
Oh, Tyler, what would you like to use in the Nighthorn army? Well, I think I'll use uh, some Spirit Hosts and Hex Wraiths. It's like, I don't think people are going to be using them quite as much after the new stuff's out. No, because they're the only units you can use currently, because they're the only units that are there. Yeah. It's like, you know, like Spirit Hosts. I've heard loads of people say, oh, they're amazing and all that sort of thing. And, you know, don't get me wrong, they on the paper like they've got six attacks they heal on a five yeah that's not good but on a six they're doing mortal wounds so on average you should be able to do quite a few more wounds but as soon as the enemy makes you minus one to hit they're now only hit on sixes and yes there are things they can make you plus to hit but um that devalues my argument so we're not going to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah the, so i think there's gonna be point. um the new models are gonna have more usage you know what is nice is that Spirit Hosts, I'm not too sure about Hex Race, they probably still will Hex Race, but uh, yeah, they will do. Like All the existing models will fit nicely aesthetically into the new range. Right. I don't see there, like, you know, if you had a Hex Race next to um, one of these new like, Hex Knights, wherever they are, I don't think that Hex Race will stick out as being the odd model because the horses, the capes and them are all sort of designed the same. Right. Yeah, and there's a picture of um, of of the new models with Spirit Host and Hex Rays kind of stand in the background, and they kind of look, they are a little bit less, a little bit less, or they're a little bit more generic ghosts, you know. the the new The new Age of Sigmar Night Haunt stuff, it looks pretty, like it looks like it's from Age of Sigmar, while the Spirit Hosts are kind of generic ghosts. While they look cool, but they're just kind of generic. But uh, they kind of fit more as background models, even. Yeah, I agree. So. Like, like I said, they do fit into the army, but yeah, to a certain extent, not as well as the new stuff because they are more generic ghost-looking models because ever since Age of Sigmas came out, it's been a um, like a copyright issue with Games Workshop trying to make their uh, armies they come out with very much an Age of Sigma army so no one else can copy them. Because yeah. if, for example, um, if you wanted to copyright an army that is just based on ghosts... It's, probably quite hard to do that but if you make them if you tweak them and make them quite different which, which they have done um it's a lot easier yeah to and, protect them yep um and the in the picture that i'm talking about um it's one of the first pictures on the night Hunt article it has archon and nagash and a mortis engine in the background but the archon is like up in the front so i'm wondering if you're going to be able to take death lords in the night Hunt army or how that will work i wonder um, potentially they might have just put these all in there because they've all got spirit hosts and stuff floating around them mm-hmm. and I see what you're saying what you're saying would make sense but um, Games Workshop doesn't make sense all the time and also if people look at these photos and say well it gave me the idea you'd be able to put them in the Nighthold Army they could just say oh we could all just put them in a Grand Alliance Death Army because that will win you absolutely no games. Yeah. Um, and they also they, could fit as allies. You could be playing some like 10,000 point game where Nagash fits as an ally. <laughs> some house yeah. rules. Get up those points and you should be able to. I absolutely hope, uh, sorry, I absolutely hope that um, Morse Engine is now going to become a Nighthawk model. I severely doubt it, but hopefully it will get the uh, Nighthawk keyword because it's in a star collecting box with the other Nighthorn stuff. Right. I want. I think it has the malignant keyword, which is the ghost keyword, which I don't think they've used yet. I wonder if they'll use no, it no. with the Nighthorn book. <laughs> malignant. I don't think it plays any part at the moment. I might be wrong. There might be the odd like spell out there that affects malignant, but I don't think it does. Right. So. I, hopefully it gets switched over. It's ever since that Star Collecting Box came out, it annoyed me a little bit just because, um, say someone went into a game social store for the first time, they saw these ghosts, they wanted to get them, and they'd buy that box, and then they get told, well, the big monster, essentially, in that box can't really go with the rest of the army. Yeah, it was it was kind of on. Um, yeah, but anyway, there's enough new models that Nihon has to make up for, um, you know, the lack of a couple others. Right, yeah. So the new uh, the new battle line I think are obviously gonna be the chain rasp hordes. They're the uh, I think they're actually on the twenty five millimeter bases, which is I think the first thing in Age of Sigmar to have those bases. I think, um, but they're just little ghosts. They got like chains on their hands, little axes and stuff. There, I like them a lot. Yeah, for like a basic battle line. Well, I say basic for a battle line unit. They're gonna be very nice. They'll come as 
probably 20 in a box they'll come as is yep. because on these bigger pitches that's they seem to be in groups of 20 um they will be ethereal so they won't take any rend or they won't have any modifiers to their save essentially so for a battle eye unit that's probably going to have either a five up or maybe at worst a six up save but it can't take any rend so we'll always get a save unless it's like more wounds obviously but then it should get a death save but it's going to be a pretty hard battle line unit to shift um, I imagine if they each get like one attack um, force and force minus one round like one damage and then maybe if they get a six to hit it does a mortal wound it's really really good yeah. at that point that's all just guessing and stuff but yeah, the, it could be really nice yeah the champion I think the champion looks so cool with this like face mask that just covers his eyes He's, I like that a lot yeah there's they've really put a lot of um different poses and like um, just this different changes between the models it's not like um, you look at you know I don't know if you've got a box of 20 of these guys and you all line them up in a row it's not like every third model is exactly the same as the one before it right yeah you'll usually look at the Games Workshop pictures like with the I'll, I'll put it up on the video but um, the group of like 20 of the same model and you'll you'll see they'll just like copy and paste like five different models kind of the same every uh four times or whatever but like it's kind of hard finding the model that looks like the same model in the chain rasp words yeah i mean to be fair i have just gone up to a bigger picture and there are like two models that are exactly the same sound next to each other but right and they're right from, in front of each other apart from that, it's they're all like, together <laughs> yeah exactly uh um, but there's there's a lot of variations with the water point is <laughs> exactly yeah and i really like these little tombstones you get with them yeah that's cool I really like that. It's I don't know. It's ever since the um, Internet Deep King, where they come with like the little fishes. Maybe like you're going to get little basic materials in these boxes. I hope so, rather than them say, "Here's a scenery pack you can buy separately." Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and then we get to something a bit more uh, scarier, don't we? Is it the uh, Glaive Wraith Stalkers? Is that right? Yep. Yeah, the Glaive Wraith Stalkers. Yeah, they're so. Oh man, everybody's speculating them being Skaven undead, which would have been cool, but. I don't think that's what they are. No, they're. Uh, I I don't know much about the uh, folklore behind it, but I know they are based on like uh, Welsh folklore. Um, where it's, it's if you look them up on Google, um, there are these like ghost creatures with like uh, their heads are like the skulls of horses and all that, and they've got scythes. So they they are based on like. Um, old folklore from our you know from our own world from our own planet, which is pretty cool. And, um, yeah, they look pretty twisted and horrible. I'm sure they're going to be quite good in the game. Yeah, um, they got those big scythes, but uh, I think they're on 40 mil bases. I think they're actually pretty big guys. Uh, they might have two or three wounds, even. Yeah, I reckon they'll have two wounds apiece, because I don't think they're going to be the same size as Spirit Host with three wounds. Uh, but, yeah, right. But they are very, very similar to the next unit as well, aren't they? Yeah, I couldn't tell for a while if they were the same kit, but I do not think they are. No, I thought at first they were, but I think there are enough differences, isn't there, mm -hmm. to um, separate them. Yeah, that's the uh, Grimgast Reapers is what we're talking about, which um, are, are almost kind of generic, um, just death, uh, this ghosts with hoods and sides. But they got... Uh, the little distinguishers they have, their eyes are covered uh, because Nagash wanted them to be like some frenzied monsters, which the fluff behind them did sound kind of cool, and I, I wonder what the rules are going to be. Yeah, and again, like, you're talking about the fluff a little bit. That's something I have liked with these um, Fraction Focus like, articles. They haven't just shown these pictures. They've given like a little bit of backstory behind them, which is um, really cool, rather than you just looking at all these ghosts and just going, they all look the same, they all have the same story. Um these ones in particular, the Grimgast Reapers, do look very, very, very similar to a, a Khan Wraith. So I don't see how a Khan Wraith is a hero and these guys aren't. Yeah. But um, no, no, the aesthetic is nice. And um, I, I wonder how they're going to different themselves from the, um, you know, the Glaive uh, Wraith Stalkers. Because they're probably going to be very similar in size. Um, one might be more defensive and the other more offensive. I'm not too sure. Well, I was thinking that these guys are on uh, 
32 millimeter, uh, yeah, 32 millimeter bases, and then I, I really think the Glaive Wraith guys are on 40 mils. Okay, so they could be like the next step up. Yeah. And they do have a yeah. musician, which uh, a lot of the Age of Sigmar stuff hasn't had musicians and champions. Well, they, I think they've had champions, but not musicians a lot of times. But have they got a musician? Have they? Yeah, the uh, the ones with the size. I already forgot their name. Grimgast Reapers. Okay. That'd be good. Just uh, hopefully give them a bonus to charge or something like that. Yeah. Or to run and charge. I like uh, I like the old command units from Warhammer Sig Warhammer Fantasy. Yeah, I like I like the traditional. You know, you've got the Bannerman, you've got the Champion, you've got the Hornblower. And uh, this is totally off topic, but uh, did you see? I didn't. Deep can have their banner gives them like plus one attacks. Everybody was going to take a whole unit of banners, and uh, Age of real quick squished that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my. What is it? Did it used to be for like every banner you had in the unit, you got an extra attack or something? Yeah, yeah. The banner, the the banner for some reason give the, gives the model plus one attack. I don't. Okay, uh, but surely he would have less attacks because he's <laughs> carrying the banner. <laughs> no, I don't no. know. And then they all have banners, and they all have plus. Yeah, but ages or uh, games workshop stopped that, which is which is a good idea. Very quickly, which is uh, that's always good. And, uh, yeah, so the units are nice. They've only shown, um, like, three of the sort of infantry units, haven't they, until we go on to the um, heroes. And the first one is the Lord Executioner, uh, which um, yeah. he pretty much, I mean, I said he was going to be called something like the Executioner because I think they've got his name uh, very well represents what the model is, <laughs> by the looks. It's quite I mean, on the nose, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got, like, you know... The beheading axe and the hangman noose. I mean, right. which, and then some ghosts flown around. Which that I don't know how he, what he's going to do. He's he's going to hang somebody up there and then chop their head off. Or like reach up there and chop their. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe the, the little the ghosts help him out though. I mean the practicalities of it as well. I mean, like what is? I mean, you can see the you know the structure of the noose and stuff tied around his back. But if he's a ghost, does he have a back? Yeah. What's it tied? Would it not slip down? If he's ethereal, so like he can move through walls and stuff, does the wooden structure also move through walls? I imagine all of that is ethereal and it's just kind of like manifesting to look real. Because I mean, the cloak isn't real, but it looks real. Cloak, yes, that's it is, it is true. Um, I'm thinking far too much into this, but I imagine <laughs> he's going to be one of the more combat orientated models right. for the Nighthold. Which I think will actually, with the new uh, edition, which we'll talk about in a minute, but uh, I think the combat characters will actually get a little bit of time in the sun. A little bit more time in the sun, I should say. Yep, I know what you're talking about, so we'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, I think they will. Hopefully this guy, maybe um, when he kills something, because he's the executioner, he um, buffs the Nighthorn units around him. Yeah. Because he does it in such style, and then maybe... Um, he, I was going to say he decapitates them and then puts them through the hangman noose, but that wouldn't work, would it? So, uh, yeah. cut, cut off a limb, maybe, and puts them, oh, I don't know, but um, hangs them on display. There you go. Um, but I don't know if you've seen, but there are other images, there's images of, I think, two other Lord Executioners, um, different models, d different pose. I am really they I'll try to find pictures and put them on the video but they look really cool. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't see that until um, probably a couple of days after this release and I was like my mate was saying, "Oh, there's no there's, there's a couple of other heroes like." Him. I was like, "No, nah, it's, it's just this guy, isn't it? It's not going to be." And then yeah, there's like a couple others I don't think they showed in the video and I'm like, "How many models are we getting?" <laughs> it's like in a good way. But, right. Um, yeah, I think So yeah, that's that's cool. I think this guy and like we were saying with the Sacrosanct Chamber with the Stormcast I think a lot of those models are for the starter set, and I think this Lord yep. Executioner is too. And then the other model is whatever you get in a clam pack, and you get two different options, and they look different. Exactly. I think you're right on that one. And um, it's the same with, um, if we go down one, to the uh, Guardian of Souls. There's like a couple of, it looks to be a couple of variants of him as well. Yeah, I like all of them. That That mask is so cool. Yeah, that mask is absolutely awesome. Um and the lantern, the dynamic of these models as well is um, really nice. And you know, obviously, there's lots of them, um, like whispers and like you know, ghost of fear effects coming off the model. They don't look too fragile either. Yeah. 
which is nice. They don't look like, oh, I don't want to put this in a case because it's going to snap. Um, Although, the Lord more. Executioner, I, I'm kind of uh, worried about that guy. He's, he's yeah, well, where he's axe. holding the axe. <laughs> the strain on the axe, and also if you get to, you know, like uh, the edge of the handle on the axe, like where it meets the blade. Yeah. That's a lot of stress. I'll be put. I'll be cutting it and putting a pin there. I think. Yeah, but they look but, really good, and they, they, it's really cool. How they look. They all look like they're floating, and they're just knocking they're, out of the park with that. Maybe. Yeah. And they're all themed in a really good way. How it, you know how it unites the army so nicely. And I'm not gonna lie. Um, when Nighthorn, you know, we had like a hint that they were gonna get some like a new battle time coming out. I did wonder how are they gonna make the models different because they are just ghosts. And I think they've done that pretty goddamn well. Yeah, for sure. Um, they have a lot of variety there. And then the Guardian of Souls, to me, he looks like he's going to be more of a supportive model. Mm -hmm. He's going to buff um, nearby units. That's just my guessing. But I... Whereas the Executioner looks like he's going to be more combat orientated, this guy looks like um, he's going to do most of his stuff. It's going to be to do with whatever that lantern is. Yeah, it has. It says it's a lure light. I wonder if Night Haunt is going to keep its. Um... It's battle trait of uh, ethereal rulers, I think it's called, where they kind of teleport into the battlefield. Which uh, um, I wonder if if this guy, because forty k has some has some item or uh, things that work, where if it's down on the table first and then you teleport something or you deploy something near it, you don't you can go within nine inches of another unit of an enemy unit. So maybe if like the guardian soul guardian souls is up up there uh you can deploy some night haunt unit within six inches of it or whatever but still but um but within nine inches of an enemy so you get a closer charge or something that'd be cool yeah I, yeah i think that's actually a good idea that could be what it is um was it the night is xeros for the stormcast he had his rules changed but he could like bring down guys yeah. within range of the enemy um yeah it would be a nice thing and on that note it'll be interesting to see um if the allegiance ability if at all um, the changes that come with it. Yeah, because... Because I doubt they're going to be exactly the same as they were in the past General's Handbook. Right. I I like the the option to do that is nice, but uh, on a 3-up, I find is kind of... Uh, it, it adds too much randomness to it, and I didn't use Deep Strikes in 40k for that same reason, because it was on a 3-up, and I don't, I, don't, I don't... I find it kind of lackluster, the whole Night Haunt battle trait. But with some, with some things like this Guardian of Souls, maybe, or... Or other things, maybe it'll be more useful. Maybe it'll be one of those units is guaranteed to come in. Right, yeah. Or he, maybe um, he like brings so in a unit guaranteed or something. Yeah, I mean, like, I didn't... Um, I haven't played Night Hold Arms, so I don't have one, but um, this guy I saw who does, and one game I had against him, and one whole game, his Mongol just didn't come on the table. Right, exactly. That's, that's, the one time that's I used the deal. Mongol, the same thing happened. <laughs> Yeah, and this is before the um, point changes on it and stuff and the um, rule changes, so it was a big deal that thing didn't come on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully he'll add his... That's the nice thing, is exciting, is that we don't know what's happening, we can't even guess, so that would be um, nice to see. And then we have the centrepiece for the uh, oh, Nighthorn um, range that's been exposed to us yet before Ooh. we talk about the uh, Waltark of Grief. Yeah. It's the, um, the new Knight of Shrouds on his... Skeletal steed. So which, cool! Oh my god. The pose as well is it's spot on. Yeah, I like that it's not just a regular horse. Uh, it looks a little bit bigger than a regular horse, but also that it has those horns and the mask and stuff. It looks a little bit uh, more um, like the old um, the nightmare or something like that from uh, Warhammer Fantasy. Yes. They had some mount that was between a horse and a manticore type thing. Oh, I oh, for Dread Abyssal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. Um, yeah, and it reminds me again of the, you know, the Glaive Wraith um, stalkers. You know, that sort of element of, like, twisted, unnatural creature. Um, and I just love how um, the sort of the cape, what the, uh, you know, the horse has is, um, I don't know the name for it, um, you know, it's decorative robe it's wearing. It's sort of, you know, like, splintering off into, like, whispers of spirit and all that, mm -hmm. which is, it's half spear, half skeletal, which is... Um, really nice I find and um, hopefully it's Wash Girl will reflect how cool it looks yeah and I like how um, Night Shots does not have legs I like how he's just like floating atop the, <laughs> the horse <laughs> yeah 
yeah, obviously the horse moves quicker than the night uh, than the night shroud. So that that must be how the logic behind that works. Yeah. And also, <laughs> does that sword fit within that scarab? Oh right, well, yeah. That doesn't look like it might might not. I haven't learned, have they? <laughs> it looks too long. If we don't even talk about width, it's yeah. I don't know, little little things, little things. I don't know. Yeah. I'm thinking too much, but but he does look really cool. Um, and also I want to note that um, I did see in those other pictures of the Stormcast, I saw other what I what I am pretty sure are other Lord and Ordinators, um, like the Malign Portents guy. And which obviously this is another version of the Knight of Shrouds, which is the Mind Portents. So I'm wondering if, and I hope that uh, was it Gitmob Grotz or Moon Moon Clan Grotz and uh, Dark Oath, whatever Dark Oath Chieftains or whatever. I hope they're both getting new books pretty soon because the Sacros Sacrosanct Chamber, the Night Haunt Chamber now, or the Night Haunt book now is a book. I wonder if these other two armies are going to get one, which they do. They should. They should. I hope so. I had a short conversation with this in the store yesterday um, about it, and he's he really likes uh, Moon Clan Grots and stuff. And I just said, you know, you can keep hoping. There's hope. It might happen. And like the Moon Clan, for example, didn't have allegiance abilities in the Second Gemma's Handbook, which is an indicator that they might have a battle tome coming out. And then they've talked about on the other side with the Dark Over uh, War Queen. Uh, or the War Chieftain, or whatever her name is. Like, um, they talked about the Ever Chosen and Slaves of Darkness, which we'll get onto um, in a little while. Um, so that's a hint that maybe they're going to do something with that, with her included. You know, she might be on some sort of, I don't know, a manticore or something. So there's hope. You know, the, the Moon Clan and the Slaves of Darkness slash Ever Chosen could have a, you know, new battle time out. Yeah, I've. Um... I kind of surprised with how many people want Moon Clan Grotz, which I mean I think they're cool, but um, so many other things in in Age of Sigma I just wouldn't wouldn't think Grotz would be what everybody wants. But I, a lot of people do like the green skin stuff, and uh, yeah, I think Moon Clan Grotz would be have a lot of popularity. I think a lot of people would use them. I also think the Spider Fan Grotz are really cool, but that's for another day. Yeah, that's for another day. It'd be interesting to see if they did something of that because like I absolutely hate spiders. For example, um, I can get rid of them, um, but I'm scared of them, but I can deal with them. And as it's summertime in Britain now, they are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. Um, but because um, I'm scared of them, um, I do find with models, if I find them a bit scary, I like them more. And okay. that sounds a little bit weird, but like, you know, the Mongol, for example, it's like it's gaping open like jaw and stuff like out of everything. I've seen the artwork for that, you know, creature, and that scares the living daylights out of me. So yeah. I like the model more. Yeah, that, that kind of leads into um, the next model on here, the Spirit Torment. I think he's kind of creepy yeah. looking, and I think he looks awesome for that. Like, and they actually they like like uh, the the one model. They have the War Scroll of him up, so you can see everything he does. Which he has he's a few abilities, pretty cool. Um, yeah, he has nice attacks as well. Like, oh, I didn't even read uh, that. Yeah. I always just skip over support character weapons and <laughs> I look right at their abilities. But uh, yeah, 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 those weapons are pretty good. But yeah, if, if um, at the start of the Battleshock phase, if three or more enemy models were slain that turn, you can pick a friendly Night Haunt unit within six inches and you'll heal them D3, unit, D3 models or, um, or you can heal them D3 uh, wounds worth of models, right? Or is it just... Um, I imagine it works like grave sites, doesn't it? Right, yeah, yeah it does. Um, so yeah, it's exactly the same as the grave site, and then there's a little bit more I'll let you read. Yeah, and um, and if you, if you kill Stormcast, you get uh, just straight three models, <laughs> three wounds back, which is cool. And um, th this rule has one, two, three. It's four paragraphs of rules, and plus the one paragraph of fluff, which is nice that GW because the last paragraph is kind of just clarifying. It's nice that GW is making things so, so specific, but. Uh, as opposed to waiting until an FAQ, but it, it's already a lot of a lot of rules already. But uh, the last paragraph is just saying that you can use it multiple times and not with the same guy or whatever. So I think you're going to see a couple spirit tor spirit torments in each night haunt army, just healing models back, which would be really cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll certainly get a couple. Um, the model itself, even if it's um, you know, if you got a couple on their monopoles, they are really nice models, and um, it's nice to see that. You get a bonus for killing Stormcast Eternals because there's plenty of Stormcast Eternal armies you fight. 
Mm-hmm. So it's nice that that's reflected. And like you say, they've put quite a bit of clarification with the rules here. And I think that might also be just to fill up those War Scroll cards that they make. Oh, yeah. So, and um, I mean, I'm sure you'll put a picture on the uh, video so everyone else can see. But what do you think, just a little thing, but the aesthetic of the uh, War Scroll has changed, hasn't it? Like, you know, the coloration and all that. They make it a bit more cleaner, haven't they? Yeah, I think it looks good. Um, it it kind of reminds me of 40k. Uh, each each book has a different theme to it, like that, and each book fits the army's theme. So I'm kind of uh, curious as to why this this one looks very uh, like Stormcast. Yeah, Stormcast uh, Sacrosanct Chamber to be specific. But um, but yeah, it'd be kind of cool to have the Night Haunt like some ghostly stuff in the background. But still, it looks really cool. I like I I do like them with the little picture in the back top there too. I think that's really nice. Um, I like yeah, I do. I was going to say I do miss the days, and you know, like the big Grand Alliance books they did a long time ago. I liked it when you had a picture of the model, and then on the next page was the picture of the rules. Mm-hmm. That probably just took up too many pages and stuff in the book and made the books too big. But I like that there's a little picture in the corner just so you can you know what you're talking about. Because the first time I'm going to read through this Nighthorn Battle Tome, I'm not going to remember the names apart from the execution of Bloke and the uh, Night of Shrouds. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to know who the Spirit of Torment is compared to the um, Guardian of Souls, you know, when I'm first time reading it. So it's quite nice to have a quick reference. Right, yeah. And also there's a little, uh, I don't I don't think this was in the other ones, but there's a little bit, a little bit, a uh, little sentence of fluff or a couple sentences of fluff, a little bit of description of what the model does or is in the story. Yeah, that's similar to when we first saw the Knight of Shrouds and then the other um, heroes from the Malign Portents, they did that, didn't they? They had like a little description of like the fluff behind it and then how it works okay yeah um the only other thing i had to talk about the night haunt is from those other pictures so if you watch the the release which i recommend you do because it's awesome the the release video they had for the from warhammer fest of, of the night haunt stuff it looks really cool but um they talk about oh actually they show the black coach which isn't um well, I don't know. I don't want to say black coach because I, I refuse to think it's a black coach. <laughs> but it looks really cool. It's huge. Um, they just showed that like one picture of it, pretty much. Yeah, and I honestly hope the rules don't change because it'd just be funnier. Because <laughs> you want to buy it because it's such a nice model, but you never use it. Uh, or you use it for one time, and your opponent will, you know, shoot it to death, right? And then laugh you'll you off wa- the they'll wonder why you're cheering. And then you can just say, it was a waste. Oh, how good would it be if it only had like seven wins as well? <laughs> uh, I think, joking right. aside, it's going to become a lot more supportive. Its rules are also going to get a complete rewrite because there's no way that model is going to be 120 points. You think, you so think it's, it's going to have ethereal? Get a... You think it'll get the ethereal rule? It'll be bestowed with the ethereal rule? <laughs> I think there's enough bloody ghosts on it to make it ethereal, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think, you know, obviously not at the start of the game, but once it's killed like 500 enemy models, um, it will gain the ethereal rule, sure. Um, as long as that happens in the first battle round. Um, but I think it will become much more supportive. So hopefully so, it will buff your army a lot more. And it's going to be... It's not going to be the main centerpiece of the army, though, because there is obviously the yes. other model they've been keeping wraps behind, which they have showed off. It's not a secret, but they just haven't said exactly what it is. Yeah, they, oh, showed... they have said exactly what it is. They haven't shown us it. Right, they've showed like a silhouette of it in that in that video I was talking about. But I think the narrator, the female narrator, I think is is that model or is supposed to be representation of that model. And I think it's all they said it. In some other article, I think it's the Mortark of Grief. So there's a fourth Mortark. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm hoping that's going to be Isabella von Karstein. I know that might be a bit of a long stretch, but I said mm. that. I think I said it in my video last week. I put it in one of the comments and saying that it's a bit of a long stretch, but it'd be really awesome if it is because if she comes back, it could be even be a chance that Vlad comes back. That's probably not going to happen. Um, but it's, it'll be a character that we already know and they don't have to make up new story for You know, it could just be something we already know. It, I mean, we all really like Age of Sigma here, but it's nice these little references we get from, you know, uh, Warhammer Fantasy, because it had such great stories. So if they could just bring one of the characters over, it'd be awesome. Um, also, Grief, um, uh, Isabella surely went through some heartbreaking times. Hmm. And it'll be a Mortark that obviously is going to be a new kit, so it's going to look very different from Manfred Neferata 
and Arcan. I have all three of those models, and I've had to modify their poses quite a bit just to make them different. Yeah. I, so it'd be nice to have an Emol talk. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, I saw other speculation. It was um, the Lamian character. Uh, I can't remember her name. The one that would give skeleton archers her BS. Um, oh, Queen something, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Kalita? Yeah, it could be. It's the one that hates vampires, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's Queen Kalita. But uh, that's a good point that you say um, that you think it's uh, Isabella. That would be cool too. But I didn't even think about that it pretty much has to be a character from Warhammer Fantasy because the other three Mortarks are all characters from Warhammer Fantasy. Yeah, you would hope so. You would, you would right, hope that's yeah, what yeah. it is. Uh, right. Um, and also, it looks quite big. Yeah. And I hope I hope it's the exact same pose <laughs> as the other Mortarks. <laughs> it would be lovely, wouldn't it? It's exactly the same. <laughs> Which is uh, awesome. It looks cool, but you don't want to have all four of them looking exactly the same. No, and Sanko, well, you might have noticed this as well, but when we looked through the video, um, there were those Tomb Banshees with, like, you know, like the roses in their hair, like from, like, the Garden of Morkit. Mm -hmm. um, I might be wrong because... I haven't seen it, but I haven't seen those Tomb Banshees and anything else with like the roses in the hair, so I think that might be part of this Mortarka Grief model. Oh, maybe so. I was thinking those were uh, the Shades or some members of the Shades Bar team, because there's also another picture in that video of a model that is not the Lord Executioner, that does not, that has a, his face is covered completely in a robe, he doesn't have his eyes cut out or whatever, and uh, yeah. he looks kind of like the Morngol almost, but he is almost definitely in the Shadespire team because I saw him with like three other models, which I don't think included the Banshees. Um, oh, okay. But, but uh, I, yeah, I was wondering if the Banshees and those sheep guys are uh, our Shadespire team. And if they are in the Shadespire team, they're in this video, they should be in the new battle time yeah. because this video is about the new battle time. So and I it hope won't be like the. Sorry, I was just going to say, it won't be like the Legions of the Gash where you can't have the, are they the Circle Guard? Yeah, the Sepulchral Guard. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to, right. Um, and I hope if they are a Shadespire team, they are relatively good in the game of Age of Sigmar and actually able to use. Because, like, I think people, it would be kind of cool to bring your Shadespire team to Age of Sigmar, have a little bit of, a little bit funky rules or whatever. And I think people would do that, but. Age, uh, Games Workshop is not making it easy for us. No, it's uh, it's like you know, like I'm saying those skeletons from Shadespire. You know, honestly, their rules. I'd rather just have normal skeletons. Yeah, right. But, you know, they're cheap. I think they're cheap on the points as well. And um, or if you want to elite skeletons, I'd rather just have Grave God. Um, so they end up just being like the champions and all that of the, your big blocks of um, you know skeleton warriors. So it'd be nice if they can actually transfer to Age Sigma, like you say, and you will actually want to use them, and you will use them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that Mortark of Grief, um, that's going to be, it looks really big. Um, and it's just another model for this Nighthawk release. Yeah. Which is, they're going to have two Behemoths, because I imagine that Black Coach is the Behemoth. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like anything in this army, apart from like screaming, is going to have shooting attacks. So it doesn't look like death is getting any like artillery or anything like that. I don't know if they ever will, but it's just another army that won't get it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but and then yeah, with a couple of the changes coming to the Age of Sigma rule set, like you know, obviously one of them is you can't shoot um, out of combat, isn't it? Yeah. Well, he said it was in another video. It was a little bit less. Lower production value than the Nighthawk one, but it was still fun. Oh, yeah. um, but he said you can't shoot in combat. I think is the exact words. I think, but I, I assume that means in and out of. Uh, yeah, I presume that he hasn't said that, but I presume. And if that is the case, Nighthawk, of course, it has a few screaming attacks and stuff, but it's not really a shooting army, so mm -hmm. it makes the army even better. And then just to say one more thing about the Nighthawk video. Um, Fantastic video. Um, the narrating uh, almost gave me like a chill down my spine. Right, I wanted to uh, say that, yeah. The voice acting is, you know, spot on. Well done to that person and the uh, production team on that because that was amazing. Yeah, Best I video wonder, I've seen for a long time. I wonder if it was the same woman that did uh, The Daughters of Cain, wow. which was also like out of this world, like really good. That one definitely gave me a spot, uh, tingle down my spine. That one like almost yeah. made me want, I mean, it did make me want to start Daughters of Cain, which I eventually stopped. But 
it like one oh man very good narration both of those videos oh yeah so I like, even got like a little bit of goosebumps just thinking about that um, she does things really well and also like the um, the theme of the video goes so well and um, like you say just a little thing like that makes you want to do the army yeah which is um, really cool and if that voice um, is also if we go back do you remember those more important videos do you remember did you watch them yeah you know the one where it was the uh, that sort of monk who was in like a cave who used to uh, oh. was like the seer and you could watch everything and then one of the videos he got scared out of the cave by this um, female voice right I bet that was her yeah because at first like well at first I thought it was Neferata and then like Daughter Kane so everyone's like oh it's Marathi and I thought it was Marathi but now it might be the Mortal of Grief hmm you know could yeah, be right. I mean it's probably done by the same uh, female voice actor so that doesn't help but um, it was in the realm of Shaish wasn't it the realm of death so it maybe it, it's just another mystery you know which makes it even better right yeah yeah but um, like we're talking about kind of uh, dancing around this entire time that uh, at Warhammer Fest they also announced which we've been talking or thinking about for a while Age of Sigmar second edition 2.0 whatever you want to call it but the new edition of Age of Sigmar and like that's what uh, Age Nagash was talking about with um, um, what were we just talking about uh, what you mean like the not being able to shoot into combat right, right sort of not thing. being able to shoot in combat and um, also we got uh, just... and command abilities too are very different now yeah it's um the new changes, I mean, to sum it up, I think it's just going to f- flip the meta on its head. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to keep track of, you know, uh, what is the you know most competitive army and all. It's, um, I remember when the General's Handbook 2 came out, and with all the new allegiance abilities that brought it, automatically just um, made some armies just a lot more better. And uh, it changed the game hugely, especially at tournaments and stuff. And... Now with the, you know, they've named it the second edition coming out, it's going to be an even bigger change than that. It's going to hugely change things. I mean, and that's going on the information that they've told us. And they've probably told us, what, probably about a tiny bit of what that rule book's going to be. Right. Yeah, it's already seemingly flipping the game over. And it, it's really, it really needed uh, just a few fine-tuning of a few rules. And uh, it seems like or I hope they're doing those as well as these new, new things like the command abilities. Which um, yeah, so like every model, every he- leader model can now use command abilities. They have now three generic ones as opposed to just the one inspiring presence, and they are. It's a bigger bubble if it's your general as opposed to just a hero. That's how they kind of made the general still something better. Um, and, and there's also command points. So it's not every leader uses a command ability every turn. It's you get one command point each turn, and then I think you get another one for um, having a battalion. And there's some, some management. So like first turn, you might not have anything to shoot or something or attack. So you're not going to use your command ability. You're going to save that point for the next turn so you can do two command abilities that turn. I think it'll uh, change a lot of stuff, really. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the first time I heard of, um, before they talked about the command points, they just said, like, uh, every hero will get the opportunity to use their command ability. I was like, I didn't like that at first, because I like, I like choosing my general to have the right command trait, and, like, it making that hard decision, going, oh, I want this big combat guy, but this smaller guy has a better command ability. Mm-hmm. Um, no, you no longer have, the, um, have to make that difficult choice. And, like you say, there's command points. So it sounds like a good way to do it. I mean, I've got no experience of it, so I'm just guessing here. But it sounds like a good way to do it. The only problem is, is the battle tome armies obviously have battalions, and the armies without battle tomes don't really have any battalions, so they will have less command points. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, that's always been a thing. Um, yeah, you know, it's it, you can find holes in everything, and I'm probably doing that unfairly, but. Um, and but no, it sounds like a re- really nice change. And right. then, like you say, the three new command abilities, the Inspiring Presence um, one, has changed as well, like you mentioned. But also, it's only for one turn, isn't it? Right, yeah. And and it's not in the hero phase. I wonder what 
the hero phase is gonna if the hero phase is even gonna be there because now these command abilities not not one of them activates in the command or the hero phase. Yeah, it's it's done very weirdly. Go like talking about the spine presence one. Like I said, it only works one turn, so it's got weaker in that sense. But um, with you being able to have flexibility of doing it from the other heroes, and um, you also get to um, see how the battles unfolded and if you need to use the inspiring presence i think one of the examples they give if um when you thought you had a big unit of brutes and you didn't think they would take much damage this turn and then they've been hit by debuffing bravery spells and they've lose loads of casualties you can quickly go oh I'll inspiring presence them so they don't run away you can react a lot more but um yeah i think sorry go ahead um, i was gonna say Talking about like the here phase getting shorter, I swear they said somewhere in the article that they're doing this to try and expand the here phase. But like you say, it's quite. It feels like it is getting a bit shorter, doesn't it? With some of the changes. Right. I, I wonder if sometimes it's just going to be like, oh, here's my one more command point, and that's my hero phase. Yeah. Unless there's that one turn where you've been stacking like four command points, like I know what that be turn four or something like that, and then you go, oh, there's loads of um, hero phase command abilities. I'm going to use. Um, and then you go bang, 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 bang. Yes, that means that uh, that turn four you've had, your hero phase has been extended because of all the command abilities you're doing, but that would have meant that you haven't been doing command abilities in the previous battle rounds. So those hero phases were really short. Right. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we were talking about Inspiring Presence. Um, well, so all all three of these, and I, and I assume... Command abilities, new command abilities coming out for, going forward are going to be like this, but um, it feels like a clever way to bring a less complex version of stratagems into from age, from Warhammer 40k into Age of Sigmar. Because stratagems in 40k, you get an allotted amount of points, and then you can spend one, two, or three command points on a stratagem, and that, you can, that can be used in the shooting phase, or maybe it's used in the combat phase. But it's it allows you to react in in real time, um, and that's what it seems like inspiring presence uh, at use it at the start of the battle shock phase. So it only rests one battle shock phase, but now, like like Agent Nagash was saying, if if your brute unit took a bunch of casualties you weren't expecting, now just you react real time with inspiring presence. And then uh, the next one is at the double, which you use it after you've made your run roll, and you just you just treat it as a six. And it's like, oh, I rolled a one when it was like completely imperative that I rolled a three. And now you're at the double and you're just going six. Yeah, um, that's really good for armies that are obviously slow, that they need it. And then the flip side of that, armies that are really fast, like um, I imagine there's a lot of things that Sinesh has that can run in charge. Um, is it on gores or probably most of the gores for... Um, yeah. Uh, what are they called Bray Herds that can run in charge um, Zangles da can run in charge can't they yeah Daughters of Cain they're musicians um, all let them run in charge yep so again that's just you know a few things just spit fine here what can do this um, so yeah you've got it for them and then like I said the ones that are really slow you know like your Iron Jaws um, if you want to do this yes it'll mean that the Brutes won't be able to charge their turn but they can move like 10 inches yeah and then the uh, the third one is forward to victory. Um, that one was you re-roll your charge roll after you've rolled it. So if you fail to charge, you get to re-roll it. And all of these abilities are 12 inches for the general. I think I said this, but 12 inches for the general and then 6 inches if you're doing it from a regular hero. Um, but it's cool because a lot of the older um, factions that don't have really good command abilities or maybe have one general that's really not used, worth using his command ability, and you would just use Inspiring Presence just because you had it, now you can save it for at the double or forward to victory. Like, these things, a, a lot of, arm, uh, some armies didn't really care about Inspiring Presence. Like, uh, all demons and undead are leadership 10, so it really doesn't apply too often. Order armies are immune, whatever. And now the these armies have the option to do at the double, forward to victory, to do uh, just different things. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, that's a really good point because if I talk about my own experience, like uh, an army I've taken to a few tournaments is my flare army. And um, it's got like 21 crypt flares, um, crypt fernal and courtier as the uh, general, and then a couple other supporting like heroes. 
and the only command ability I can do at the moment is okay I'm going to make one of my unit off nine crit flares not run away which they usually won't run away anyway so it's a waste of a command ability but now if we go actually I'm going to make them be able to um, you know reroll their charge rolls that's absolutely huge and much better for me than inspiring presence right. because my unit's already bravery 10 and it already needs to lose quite a few models before any of them run away so for me, it, I almost forgot to do Inspiring Presence a lot of the times because there was right. no point. Yeah, and um, like we've said before, and, and even the Warhammer Community article says it, uh, it'll make you want to take combat characters a little bit more often because, at least for me before, I would just, if I was looking at a character war scroll, I'd skip, skip right to the command abilities, right to the aura abilities, and just find something that supports the rest of my army. I didn't care what its weapon did. But uh, this will make those those kind of models where they just had a good weapon, they didn't really do anything else. Now you can take them and you can do at the doubler, whatever. And it also will make people want to take more characters just because you'll you'll have to cover more areas. So you might have one flank over here running up, and you're gonna you need it to charge in. So you're gonna ca keep a character over there so you can reroll the charges for that flank. And then you might have another support, another cheap support character, or not even a, a support character. Maybe he's just a, a cheap fighter character over on the other flank, just in case you need at the double, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, something I thought about already is um, the Legion of Night uh, for the uh, Legion of the Gash army, where you can set like three units up in reserve, and then they can come onto the table edge, things within six inches of the table edge and nine inches away from the enemy. Um, and that's just a guaranteed thing you can do in the end of your movement phase. So you do that um, with, let's say, I don't know, you've got, you know, four uh, Morgas Harbingers, and uh, they come up onto the table edge. You also bring a hero up alongside them, wherever you want to be, and um, you go, right, okay, so I'm nine inches away from the enemy. I'm rolling three charge dice, so you should make the charge, but just in case you don't, I'm going to do four to victory, and then I can reroll these three charge dice if I need to. And then that's almost like, bam, four more gas there with a huge glaze to do loads of damage and guarantee pop up behind the enemy and charge them. Mm -hmm. Just a nice yeah. little thing. Yeah, so um, also I think it's going to make uh, battalions a little bit better. And I think they needed it because um, some battalions you're paying quite a few points at this, at this junction in the game because a lot of them went up with the General's Handbook 2017. But now you get a new, uh, an extra relic and an extra command point, which m might make them more worthwhile. Yeah, there's, I think, and the thing is, battalions, a lot of the time when people talk about them, you hear about the really, really nasty ones, like, you know, murder hosts and so on, and change um, hosts, I think it's called as well. Um, but the majority of them, like you say, aren't really worth their points. So this is just another incentive to take them, which is nice, because for me, when I look at uh, when I get a new battle time for a new army um, like the night horn uh, when I get that I will look at it and I will go hopefully there will be a battalion in here that I can build my army around mm -hmm. so you know it's just a nice way to reward your um, you know collection of certain models really yeah um, also I wonder usually this ability la uh, is applied through battalions but models that or Archeon has this models that allow other models to use their command ability. I wonder how that will work now. I wonder if they'll make like a blanket this is what this does and I hope that's like maybe uh, if you spend one command point another character can do it for free or something like that. Well they've mentioned Archeon quickly in the Ever Chosen article mm -hmm. and they said that um, they've had lots of questions already and his command ability will essentially be the same with a few changes. The changes I imagine for uh, models that have abilities like that is, for example, Archaeon's one, you know, everyone can use their command ability. I reckon it'll be like everyone who is within like 24 inches of him. They will just limit it somewhat. But on the, because, you know, you could spam lots of cheap heroes with good command abilities, um, you know, like uh, Spy and Deathbringers and stuff. But on the flip side, if everything stays the same in how you construct an army, in a 2,000 point army, you can only have six heroes anyway. Yeah. So it's not that, probably wouldn't be that broken. And um, like you said, that Games Workshop is getting a lot of questions about Archeon. 
I love how like a lot of people are like exploding online, like Archeon's command ability is worthless. Yeah, yes, Games Workshop, they completely forgot about Archeon's command ability. They're like rushing to figure out what to do. They don't know how to make them even even decent. Like, no, they thought about this ahead of time and they, they have some plan for it. Oh yeah, like all all these rule changes and stuff would have been made about nine months ago. Right. Yeah. And the ideas behind them would have came about a year ago. So you know, people. I mean, I feel guilty of this as well. I complain a lot. Like, when, for example, the Legion of the Cash book came out and there's no new death bottles, I was the first one, you know, <laughs> whining about it. Um, I won't say I didn't. But, um, like, as I say, I'm guilty of this myself. I think what I need to do and other people as well who are out there, um, sometimes I need to take a step back and just go, um, they're like, for example, this Nighthawk thing was a fantastic example. It's like I said, when the Legion of the Cash book came out, um, I was a bit disappointed that there's no new models. However, they're probably already deciding what should be the final paint scheme for these Nighthawk models at that point. Yeah. You know, it's already in the pipeline. You're just going to be patient. Yeah, it's like Lord Ordinator. Um, everybody's like, oh, well, Stormcast won't have War Machines. Well, you're getting them, I'm sure. But it, I think it's about kind of like trust in Games Workshop, which... A lot of people don't have, and for obvious reasons. But I think we should be gaining trust in Games Workshop that if they release something that looks kind of funky right now, that they're still a business. They have to release things in waves. They can't release just everything at once. Like, just note that probably in a couple months you're going to get something better or something that works with this rule that seemed pointless at the time. Yeah, people just need to be a bit more patient. Um, it is a you know, it's a business, so there's only limited releases they can do, and um, they don't want to bring out bad products. They want to bring out stuff you like, so you can buy it. Right. So nothing, nothing's intentional. Um, after this, after June, there might be a new battle time coming out for Stormcast. You know, to do with the new models, um, but I and a few clarifications over all the new rules. Apart from that. Maybe there'll be a bit of a break for a moment because this is costing a lot of money. This how many things they're releasing is huge, mm -hmm. and um, I know, for example, a little thing they're doing is in the UK anyway. Is um, the paint brushes are all going up by thirty p each? Uh, I don't, I don't buy the games or shop. I just buy cheap ones from craft stores. Yeah, I don't, I don't like. I basically buy the games for version ones and then use them until they're literally only got one hair left. <laughs> Um, but I am going to probably just stop buying cheap ones because like that price increases they're, they're already very expensive yeah. you know uh, raising them by like I say like 30 piece what's that like probably like 55 cents or something um, it's <laughs> it's not needed they, they say they need to do it because there's things like uh, they run Facebook pages now and Warhammer community which is true but I'm sure they have a good profit margin with their models yeah um, another what if back to the command abilities another what if like for Archeon's ability or things like that let you use other people's command abilities if it was just like here's three extra command points a turn like even something simple like that would be kind of a fix because I, I was just thinking how would Archeon's ability work since it's outside of the hero phase like if if you have a leader within 24 inches just like you get a free inspiring presence like or, or free at the double whenever you need it. Like, is that what it is? Because that would that would be pretty goddamn good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because imagine on the wash guy it says something like they can use their command ability, but it doesn't say at time, doesn't it? You just presume it's going to be in the hero phase. Yeah. So yeah, that's another that's another good point. Um, I'm I'm sure this is going to be explained in you know that rule book coming out. So I think um, else what I'm really excited about, you know, we say about command points and stuff, but. Um, like so they're, they're tightening up a lot on the rules they're going to make the game uh, it's already a tactical game in my honest opinion but they're going to make it a bit more in depth um, something else I'm really excited about though is all the lore they're going to inject into it like they're talking about maps and everything which um, for me is really cool I mean like in my bedroom I've got like a map of the old world for example because I really like knowing where you're fighting the battles and stuff like that hmm, yeah so I really like they're going to bring something they're going to bring that element back to Age Sigma yeah, and I know a lot of people are complaining. I didn't really mind the kind of abstract lore, but also I didn't really read it. I kind of listened to other people talk about the lore, which I was fine with, but maybe when you're reading it, you're kind of expecting one thing, and you don't have it explained to you, so you don't know what to expect after that. 
So, so the, yeah. any any addition to the lore is is good in in any case. Yeah, it's 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 nice. I mean, like I don't mind abstract lore. I thought it was quite good because I've got loads of um, lore for my death army and stuff. Like from about three years ago, I created my own city and all that sort of stuff. But it's like when you get to like the lore of the Seraphon for me, I was I was struggling. Um, mm-hmm. That was a bit too abstract. Well, I mean, it's just a, a light spaceship that flies around space and uh, is manned by a telepathic cr- toad. I mean, it's not big. A, it's not that crazy. Not that crazy, especially when that toad wants to go to war. He memorizes all his lost soldiers from <laughs> memory and light, celestial light. Right. He summons them from the starlight. Yeah, and then there was like a story, like a short story of like a slant died and his surf on like the warriors were still there. So I don't know how that works. But <laughs> it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was really really hard to try and get my head around hmm. uh, but um, no it's, it's nice that they're um, it's like for example I played Total War Warhammer and on that it's really cool like flying over this huge like you know fantasy map and um, it's nice like seeing like that's Athel Lauren that's like where the Wood Elves are um, that's Nagadron that's where the Dark Elves are that's Ulfhorn that's where the High Elves are there's like um, Sylvania that's where the Vampire Counts are I quite like that uh, uh, the element of structure. Yeah. Um, so back to the second edition stuff. Uh, the the one other thing I think they mentioned. I don't think there was really anything else other than se- for the second edition was turn priority, which is just slightly different. Where um, if if there's a tie when rolling for initiative, then the person who got the first turn picks who takes this turn. If that makes any sense. So the, the if any if a tie happens after the first turn, then the person who took player player one goes first or chooses. Sorry, that was complicated. Uh, that's that's right. So um, yeah, I I think that's just a way to soften the blow of a double turn, isn't it? I mean, yep. one of the things I'll be honest that I really like about Age Sigma is the uh, randomness of who's going to get the next battle round. Mm-hmm. I think that adds a lot of fun, um, but. There are a couple of times where you can get double turned and it, it can really hurt in some cases. Yeah. If you get double turned by, I don't know, as each guy fire army, which I have been before, um, it can be really hard to deal with the damage output they're doing to you. But there's been some times where you get a double turn has saved you the day. Right. Uh, but uh, I know there are some people who didn't like the um, randomness or the turn priority. So I think this might be a happy medium yeah. between people who liked it and didn't like it. So yeah, I, I think it's quite cool. It yeah. makes it... It feels like with a new edition, they're sort of dragging some of the the concepts of 40k 8th edition into Age Sigma. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like the double turn. I think, I think it's one of the best ways to keep the game from ending the top of turn one, you know? Like, yeah. you don't want to make an army that just is going to just crush you the top of turn one because you probably need to survive the top of turn one because you'd rather have the double turn. Yeah, I, um, like, all the time in tournaments, unless I really needed to have the first turn, I usually um, gave it away. Right, yeah. Unless there's I a think... really strong alpha strike, I always recommend taking the second turn. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and I think, uh, not to be nasty or anything, but I think a lot of the people who um, don't like the uh, whole you know double turn stuff um fair play to them they just might not like it but i think some of them uh, when they get when they win that roll off they just like take the turn without hesitating right yeah and they might not think things through as much as they they should you know they think actually i can give the turn to the opponent here because naturally when you win something you want to take it you don't want to give it away yeah exactly so, but yeah, so it's a it's a small change. Um, I'm glad they've done this rather than going. Uh, I go, you go. I go, you go. Yeah, I, I like the difference. Yeah. Um, so that, as far as I know, that's that's all they said about the, as far as general rules for Age of Sigmar two. Um, and then they they've been the last week or two, they've been putting out a lot of faction focuses, which are pretty cool. A lot of pictures and off and stuff about what's going on but uh like i said i just kind of skipped to the new edition stuff um do you want to do um ever chosen 
Yeah, sure, we can do Overture. And so, yeah, a lot of it is, like, two-thirds of it is basically just telling you who they are, why do you want to play them, that sort of thing, which is quite cool. If you undecide about what army you want to do, it's worth giving these things a quick read and they might convince you. So, uh, yeah, the Ever Chosen. Um, do you want to talk about what's new in the new edition? I'm just trying to find out my own one. Yeah, um, so it's pretty, it's a really small faction. It's just Archeon, Gaunt Summoner, and Varengard, and I think that's how it's staying. Uh, the article is actually Slaves to Darkness and Ever Chosen, so I don't know why they're combining them. Maybe I, w- I would kind of hope that you're combining the two factions because Ever Chosen seems kind of uh, incomplete at the moment. But in, in any case, um, Archeon, uh, the Varengard, or, or Archeon's going down in points, I know that much. Um, yeah, uh, the Varengard, so yeah, too. Archeon. Yeah, the Varengard and the Chaos Warshine are also going down points. Sorry, what were you saying? Um, yeah, I was just saying, so they're going down in points. The Chaos Warshine, it's interesting that's going down in points because I think that was quite appropriately pointed. Um, but hopefully, like you were saying, there's a chance they might combine Slaves of Darkness with the Ever Chosen because it just feels like a very natural fit to me. Mm-hmm. And um, like Archeon, he can ally to you know any of the gods apart from the Horned Rats, but he feels like very similar to the Slaves of Darkness how they can align with pretty much any of the gods apart from the like wizards because um, obviously they can't be of corn. So it would be very nice if they just fitted together which would be awesome because I think Slaves of Darkness is one of those armies if you like Chaos um, it's one of the best armies because you can tailor it to how you want to play your games yeah and I would also yeah. imagine those people want to use Archeon because they liked the Chaos aesthetic to begin with yeah exactly and unless he gets his points cut down to almost half <laughs> half price and he's 400 points you will not be having him as an ally yeah. so it's and one of the things that annoys me about Varengard is that they can't be like in a Blades of Corn army or a Zeech army mm-hmm. because if they can be given a mark of Archeons on the table, but that's in the first hero phase, so it yeah, it's it just feels like a little a couple of tweaks and it could be uh, maybe cool. I don't have a Chaos army, but for a, I've got a friend who does, and um, he tells me a couple of the things, and I'm like, yeah, surely just a couple of little tweaks here, and they could. Um, make it make a lot more sense yeah and correct me if i'm wrong but i know ever chosen has uh quite a few battalions and some of them are based on just the slaves to darkness models aren't they or there's like those nurgle ones and then the corn ones but i they're, thought they were just slaves to darkness models aren't they they're based on mortal followers yeah yeah so uh yeah like so it's like, like for example there's the fake sworn warband for zeech which i don't have the book with me at the moment but I believe it's mortal followers so it, you could argue it could be things like um, you know like the acolytes and stuff as each from the disciples as each but you're right these battalions did come out when there was none of the new mortal followers of the new gods it was literally just slaves to darkness and it's in the ever chosen like battle tome which confused me maybe they needed to fill out the ever chosen battle tome a little bit because otherwise it would just be free war scrolls yeah yeah, I think that's the way that Ever Chosen can take other models because those models would get um, not the keyword, not the Ever Chosen keyword, but they would be able to, they would be allowed in the faction because of the battalion. Yeah, it's. I I'm interested to see what they do with it yeah. because at the moment it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but that's about it for Ever Chosen. There's another kind of minute rule they're adding, but. Yeah, like I was saying, with these fraction focuses, uh, like three quarters of it is just basically just telling you about the army already, and then there's a very little telling you about what's going to be in the new edition, but I won't worry too much about that because the new edition's out in, well, it's June in, uh, what's that, 11 days, 12 days? So yeah. I bet when the, when the next month or so, or 30 days or so, I, I bet it's going to be out or we'll have the date for it. Yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, if at worst, it's going to be the end of June, isn't it? So what's that going to be, like five weeks from now sort of thing? So uh, yeah, right. really, really soon. And that's the other great thing about this. It's just how close it's coming out. It's not like when it was Shades Bar, and like, I don't play Shades Bar, but when they talked about Shades Bar, it's like, yeah, this thing's coming out in about eight months from now. Brilliant. With this, <laughs> yeah. it's like, within a month, it's like, oh my God, it's so good. It's so much as well. 
Yeah. So, like the they released all that IMF Deepkin stuff, and I was like, oh, this will be a few months out. We're going to have to wait for all this. And then it was like a couple of weeks, and it was there. Yeah. I have to say, the only thing about that IMF Deepkin thing is they did sort of tease the release of it out a little bit, a little bit too. They stretched out the release of the models, didn't they? Yeah, there is. I, I, at this point, I don't know. It, there's still stuff being released. The Sharks, I think, are on pre order this week, since this weekend. In the UK, the Sharks have came out this week. Oh, okay, I, I, with, I'm probably wrong. With the with the years, no, I, I thought they were, they were pre order as well. But um, no, but I think it's still like a four week release or something, or a three week release, a four week, I think. Yeah. I think one of the releases, one week, was literally just like three small characters. Yeah. And while I don't think I mean. I know I don't need to start a Night of the Deepkin Army. I have picked up the uh, <laughs> I've picked up the horse, the seahorse model like four times from my local store and started to walk towards the cash register and like, no, no, I can't do this. And then I like pick up the book and I'm like, nah, well maybe for my channel. No, no, I can't do that yet either. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the book. Um, I went that far because I was like, it, you know, give it a good read, haven't read it. Mm. Um, but the seahorse, ugh, that has to be done at some point, mate. Um, that seahorse is so good. Yeah. I stand by it. That sculpt is so nice. Right. And um, also, because I kind of forgot to mention, but with the Night Haunt stuff, um, I'm trying to think of a way to make it look kind of different. Because um, right now, my Night Haunt stuff is just painted that green ethereal stuff, which was easy and it looks fine, but I don't think I'm going to want to continue it with, with a whole army. And um, so I was trying to think of a way, and that the, the real life picture of the uh, the horse faced ghost inspired me, but like kind of a swampy theme, like somehow make them look like they've like just come out of the swamp water, like they have sticks and twigs on them or something. I was trying to think of some way to do that, but uh, I thought that'd be yeah, cool. Yeah, you could do. Be interesting to see how it could be done. You can almost, you know, if you want to do water effects and stuff, you can almost cut like the models almost in half so they're sort of like the dragon capes they have you cut that off and they have them like literally coming out of the water yeah could could be a way to do it with my night horn um i do mine i don't paint it green and stuff i paint mine in like um uh, a red effect and i bluff the blood god sort of effect ah that's cool so it can take a while but it's um it's nice how i've always done it and i've done it for the like spirits for my nagash and manfred and arcan and nefera and um I just red's my favorite color, so it yeah. finds a way. Um, right now, I, I do have a swamp based theme on my undead, and uh, a lot like the zombies are coming out of the water and stuff. But uh, so a lot of the army is kind of green in theme color, and lately I've been wanting to do red. I saw this picture of a knight of shrouds. He was like red, and then he had some gold trim, and then his skin was like real dark, like almost brown or black. And I thought he looked really cool. That's nice, yeah. That's yeah, just little. I don't like painting things how they are on the box anyway. I yeah. find it's a bit. If you aim for that as well, it can be really hard to try and get a spawn. And just one more thing with the night horn. The only thing I'm a little bit unsure about, I'll probably like it after a while, is how they have arms and stuff. How they have like skull faces and then they have like arms and fingers. And hmm. I, I kind of like that because they're just such frail arms and they're just like yeah. they're kind of creepy looking. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they have to have like, lots of muscle in them. I think it would look wrong. But how they've done it, I think it's just, just spot on, isn't it? Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's... Uh, back to faction focuses. Um, I think Iron Jaws was the next one. And there's there's a little bit of information, like the Maw Crusher is going down in points, and so is Gordrak. Which, um, Gordrak's really good, but I think he probably did need a drop in points, because I didn't really see him very much. Yeah, he's, he's good, but... The more crusher, when you can give it an artifact and a command ability, it's better and it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. So, but Gordrak, you know, if you want it just for, for fun, um, he's he's really quite a nasty piece of work. Yeah, and it looks like Ard Boys are also going down in points, which is probably good because I don't think I saw them eat. Well, I guess no. Some people, some people took them as their base battle line, but I don't think a whole oh, lot saw... of armies were based around these guys. No, well, I, I didn't see armies based around them. In tournaments, I usually saw like one big block of 20 or something in an army just okay. to be the objective holders. Then everything else would be cork runners or brutes. They were sort of the ones that had left out a little bit. Yeah, I did see an army of a sizable chunk of it, like 70% was Ard Boys. So it was kind of like that classic green tide, but it was still uh, Iron Jaws. It looked really cool. 
Yeah, I bet that was nice. Um, and the Iron Jaws, I'll say this, they're, for me, they're one of the nicest model range. Yeah. Like, the like Maul them. Crusher is just awesome. It's so orky. Yeah. You know, it's just brutal. Yeah. And um, the final thing they mention is uh, they talk about the endless spells, which I was trying to think of the word. Um, it's the malign sorcery stuff. This one is the Ravening Hunger. That's what we're saying. It moves over the models and does D3, or it does Mortal Wounds and whatever. We don't know how it works yet, so might as well skip the specifics on that since we already kind of went Yeah, through. I mean, well, I read what it says, but like I say, we haven't, we haven't got it nailed down. It just says, after this model has moved each unit that has any models it passed across and each other unit that is within one inch of it at the end of the move suffers d3 mortal wounds in addition subtract one from bravery characteristics of each unit that has any models passed across until the end of the battle round now might not might just be me reading not, not right but that sounds quite long worded to me yeah like it, this thing moves over models and it does damage them that's more wounds yeah i think it's because um all those annoying rules lawyer or games lawyers or yeah rules lawyers that um they don't the games workshop fails to add one little word and they're like oh it means this this totally different thing that i know it doesn't mean it but it could be interpreted that way so let me just play it like that to be an ass like it's because of those people and like yeah not always not i shouldn't say always those people because sometimes we just two people will read the same rule and (laughs) two people will read the same rule and they'll just get the different different interpretations that that does happen yeah it's um but yeah i i, I agree i mean there's things like for example the weird not shaman for example because he's in the picture here um if he gets a double the closest auric unit suffers d3 mortal wounds like if he gets a double to cast the closest auric unit suffers d3 mortal wounds um now he's got the auric keyword so it will always be him who suffers the more wounds but if that was meant to be the case they would say the weird knob shaman suffers <laughs> d3 more wounds right huh and there's another thing like I got in an argument with someone about in the tournament was um, they so you know there's a few battle plans out there where uh, if you've got you know 20 more models it auto takes an objective right so their argument was um, if they had a unit of I don't know um, 30 demonettes um, that unit even when it goes down to one model in that unit, because it started off as 30 d Manette, <laughs> it's still counted as a unit of 20 more models. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you see why I argued? Yes. <laughs> I was like, no, no, it doesn't. And it happened again with some of a bloodletter bomb. I finally killed his bloodletters, and he was still arguing that they were still... Yeah. No, it's... it's, it's I, I said to him, you know, I've got, you know, like four blocks of 40 skeletons, so if you want to play that game, and they're quite hard to kill. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, so it is just how people read the rules differently. I mean, we could go back to the first days of Age of Sigma where it was very simple. If you wanted to have plus two to your charge roll with your, um, you know, your Black Ops or Hard Boys, all you had to do was shout WAG. Everyone knew what they were doing, and they got the plus two to charge. Right. But, um, so, yeah, that is the... Uh, all we know about the new spells at the moment yep um and then they got uh the host of Slanesh was the next one I had up yeah which I was quite surprised they talked about Slanesh really because been quite quiet with well they've talked about him recently but like in the they haven't really mentioned Tactile you know how the game side of him have they yeah. they did talk about where he is though didn't they they did mention in the article Right, I was trying to find it, but uh, they did specifically say uh, Slanesh is not dead. He's just, he's definitely not dead. Can't find it. And then after that, I think it said moving on uh, (laughs) swiftly. (laughs) So, uh, Um, yeah, but they they get a few tweaks in their rules, aren't they, and a few extra things. Yeah, actually, the Slanesh one was, uh, it had quite a few new rules stuff. Um, Actually, these, uh, it does just talk about the two main command abilities from the... uh, Chaos Lord on Steed and Keeper of Secrets, which I think there's just slight tweaks in this. Yeah, I think and it's just were slight those tweaks. Pretty... Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, were those command abilities already out there, were they? They were, but I, I imagine if we brought up the other ones, they would be slightly worded differently, is what it sounds like they're saying. Because they are not bad command abilities. Right, yeah. Because I know um, excessive violence, I know that one is that one. Cause, or I know that's what its effect used to be, or very similar to Pylon twice. Pretty sure that's all it was. 
Just making like a Chaos Lord and Demonic Mount, uh, well not Demonic Mount, um, on Manticore for example, being able to attack twice isn't bad, or like a unit of Chaos Chosen. It's quite, uh, it's not bad, I imagine it sees quite a lot of use. Mm -hmm. um, and especially when Sinesh gets a release at some point, which I'm thinking is going to be like January um, 2019. Yeah. I imagine there's going to be a lot more uses for this. Yeah, I agree. Um, what else did they have? Uh, they have a slight tweak to the Invaders battle trait. Uh, I don't know. I guess they're just... Um... Oh, so all... Oh, maybe that's what those rules are. They allow them to count as the general when using the command ability, so they get the upgraded version as opposed to the smaller version you know yes well it's, so they get like the 12 inch range on like inspiring presence and stuff rather than the 6 inch range right so maybe that's what ever yeah. uh archeon and those other abilities maybe that's what they do they let them count as the general as opposed to just a random leader that could, could be yeah that could be a way they do it yeah because that's what the invaders does and that's i'm pretty sure what it used to do or its effect used to be the same as Somewhat the same as Arcane. It was like pick three models, and they can all be the, uh, they can all use command ability. Yeah, with um, again with everything though, we're just gonna have to wait and see, aren't we? But that could be a way they do it. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Um, something that's interesting is the summoning is different for Slanesh. They do mention that with depravity points. Um, so I imagine it's something like uh, Corn and Nurgle have something similar. Yeah, Nurgle's got um, I can't remember what they're called. But they've got the how they summon the, like, the trees points. onto the boards and stuff contagion points yeah that's the ones yeah and that's about it for Sunesh. yes and then we move on to fire slayers don't we yeah yes I think I think they'll be uh, buffed quite a bit because they were already taking quite a few characters and now they can use command abilities all the time and that, that's going to be great they all they already had access to quite a few battalions so they're going to be getting extra command points I think uh, Fire Slayers are only going to get better with this edition. Yeah, they've, they're have they doing very well in tournaments and stuff. They're winning quite a few. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, suddenly they had like a... Psh, they weren't good. Now suddenly they jumped forward and it looks like they're going to do better even still. So that's good. Uh, and like some people say, like, you know, they're really powerful and all that sort of thing, which they are. But, the you know, people who invested in this army before they were powerful, fair play to them because they didn't have a star collecting box. It was a really expensive army. It was mm -hmm. a horde army as well. So um, it's nice that those people have been rewarded. Right. Yeah, and um, I play against a Fire Slayers player, but uh, I, I do know that because you have so many hordes that Inspiring Presence is almost, like, you almost want to use Inspiring Presence over the really good command abilities that exist on the, the Rune Father oh. and Rune Son. And you kind of have to make the choice, but now you don't really necessarily have to. You save up the points and uh, just use Inspiring Presence when you need it on a giant horde of of uh, your uh, big naked men. Yep, that's um, that's a good point because actually when I used to fight fire spares, it was the thing where they, I was hoping they didn't go for Inspiring Presence because then that means I could their battleship phase I could wipe you know big unit out. But now that they can do Inspiring Presence as well as their other stuff, yeah, uh, that's going to be quite annoying. Yeah. Uh, but you can only use the same command ability once, can't you? Is that a, is that a thing? I'm not sure. It would make sense. Because otherwise, that's a lot of spying presence you can do. Right, uh, like once per phase or something would be good. That's how stratagems work in 40k. You use them once per phase. Yeah, I mean, like there's there's so many uh, pages open here, so we can't find it. But you know, guys, if you know the answer to that, let us know down in the comments. I think I heard somewhere that you can only use them once. Yeah, I won't go through the individual artifacts, I guess, but it does say that Fire Slayers are getting more artifacts, and I think they kind of allude to other factions getting more artifacts and Warlord traits as well, or command, uh, command traits. Uh, yeah, so it might be a hint that there's going to be some other things in the... Um, I mentioned this will be in the General's Handbook 2018, because they said... Everything that's already got an allegiance um, abilities and stuff, I think, are going to be in the General's Handbook 2018, and then they're just maybe going to change a couple of the artifacts around. Mm -hmm. Or they might say you can choose between eight artifacts instead of six. So, don't know, be quite cool. Add some more ones. 
just to make things a bit less stagnant, you know? Yeah. Because some of the armies, there's like just the obvious go to artifact. So the less obvious they make it, the more fun it will be. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think we are finally through all the news. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've that's pretty much it so yeah it's been it's been quite a long one um but there was there was so much to talk about um like we're, we're saying in the week that we both had to cover all the new stuff so we thought a good way to do it just be a joint video just to um express our different views and stuff and really exciting times isn't it yeah definitely um so yeah again um thank you very much for having me on your channel it's been great uh, i think i might um just have a little bit of a sit down just to digest everything we've just been talking about but, um right. Yeah, thanks. No, thanks good. for being here, Agent Agash. I'm gonna leave a uh, link to your description, link to your channel in the description. I am Twin Coot, and I also have uh, War Scroll review videos and 40k content. If if you're listening to this on Agent Agash's channel. Yep, and again, um, when this goes to my channel, I will do a link to your channel, Twin Coot, and vice versa. If you're listening to some Twin Coot's channel, I do a lot of videos, uh, mainly focused around death. So if you're thinking about getting into Nighthorn and you want to learn a little bit more about them, um, feel free to check out my channel. Yeah, well, thanks again for joining Agent Nagash, and thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great day, and let me let us know any questions or comments you have in the comments section below, and have a good one.